Good evening all and welcome. I would like to wish each and every one of you a very happy Halloween. What a wonderful time. Tonight I have 100 ghost stories for you all. All new ghost stories for your listening pleasure. So tuck in for a fantastic night ahead. But before we do that, I would just like to give an extended thank you to all of our contributors on Indiegogo for the Mort's Bedtime Stories app campaign. If you would like to donate for some exclusive rewards, there's only a few days left to get in. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for you guys to check out and hopefully see you on the app. But for now, it's time to get comfortable. Grab your bed sheets and let the darkness take control. Happy Halloween! The first time I saw a ghost, I was 18. I was working at a care center, and one of my favorite residents was named Maud. She ate the same breakfast every day, toast with butter and grape jelly. So around 9 a.m. I got her toast ready. At 9.15 she came down, and she was a little late, but no worries. I said good morning, and set the toast down in front of her. She nodded, I smiled, and went back to the kitchen. I came out later to an empty table, with untouched toast sitting there. That was weird, so I asked my CNA where Maud went. She looked at me sadly. Honey, didn't you hear? Maud passed away about a half hour ago. She died peacefully. Her kids were in her room when she passed. It was really beautiful. I looked at the clock. It was 9.45, exactly a half hour since Maud came down for breakfast. Maud was as real to me as the table I set her toast on. If I had reached out, I swear I could have touched her, but it obviously wasn't the physical her. And I have believed in ghosts ever since. Of course, it helps that my co-workers and I can still see them all the time. My family moved to a different state right as I started high school. Our new house was only a few years old, on a beautiful lot with a golf course nearby, and it was the biggest house we'd ever lived on. I had my own bedroom and bathroom, and needless to say, I was super excited to live there. And the first night in my new room, I was visited by the sleep paralysis demon. It was horrifying, because I'd never had sleep paralysis before. But after moving in, and throughout the entire time I lived there, I suffered from sleep paralysis episodes nearly every single night. Just in that room though. If I fell asleep on the couch, I would be fine. I would always see a partially vicious shadow figure pretty much every time I turned off the light in my room at night. I wish I could adequately describe the terror of this thing. You could just feel how it absolutely hated you and wished you harm, even when the lights were on. It was like it was always there, just hiding in the deepest shadows, waiting for its chance to come out. So, when there wasn't any lights, I could see the shadow figure clearly standing in the corner, or in front of the window, or in the doorway. I had a mirror in my room, and that was the most unnerving place to see it. I always kept a light on in my room, and that kept most of the nastiness away. My little brother, whose bedroom was next to mine, didn't have such luck. Unlike me, who really only got spooked at night, my brother's bedroom was legit haunted. It didn't matter to me what time of day it was, or that the lights were on or off. It was always frightening to go into that room, even passing by the door was uncomfortable. Once you stepped inside, an unwelcoming chill enveloped you, and you felt like you were being watched by something evil, like honestly, truly evil. Something so wretched and malicious that you just somehow knew if you're caught by this thing, you'd be hurt or killed or something worse. Like if your soul had instincts, then they'd be screaming at you to run. And that's just how it felt to drop off laundry in the middle of the day. It was so, so much worse at night. Unlike me, who had a measly shadow figure to contend with, my brother had something actually manifest at night. I'm not really sure how to describe this entity. Terrifying, vicious, mean, evil. It both had a form, but also didn't. It was like the embodiment of hatred and ill intention. Everyone in my family had encounters with this entity. My parents saw it right after we moved in, and they went into my brother's room to set up his bed. I would often catch glances of it when I passed his bedroom and the door was ajar. My sister saw it, and she went inside to help with chores. 
It was suffocating being in that room. My brother spent only a few nights in his room before moving in with my youngest brother. He only kept some clothes in there, otherwise he never went inside. Like I mentioned before, I moved into that house just in time for my freshman year of high school, so ninth grade, and I found a wonderfully idealistic circle of friends. I just had the best time with these nerds. Like Ali introduced us to the Japanese version of Sailor Moon with violence. Anyway, as all young girls do, we decided to have a sleepover and I happily volunteered my house for the occasion. I was super pumped. My mum helped me prepare snacks and everything. And on that fateful night, me, Ali, Christina, Whitney and Tiffany all congregated in the basement living room, which we all called the den, with the intention of staying up all night. After fangirling about whatever for a few hours, we had the bright idea to play some night games, but since it was the fall, it was kind of a little too cold to comfortably play outside. Christina was always the de facto leader of our group, and she decided that we should play hide and seek, but we had to play with the lights off, otherwise it would be too easy. We weren't children after all. We set up some ground rules. The only off-limits place was my parents' room, or my older sister's room. But since my two younger brothers were going to join us, we would invade their rooms without the risk of bothering them. We played a few rounds, each of us taking it in turns being it, and it was so much fun. Dead silence, and then the happy squeal of someone being discovered. And then, it was my turn to be the seeker. I found Ali under a pile of blankets in the den. Whitney was under the kitchen table, Tiffany in the laundry room, and my brothers were in the downstairs storage room. But where was Christina? At first it was funny. Wow, she's good at hiding. Must have found a great spot. Okay, it's been like 10 minutes. Come out now. I enlisted the rest of the group to help look for Christina. We searched the house from top to bottom, except for my brother's super haunted room. I just poked my head in and called out Christina. And when no response was forthcoming, I quickly backed out and shut the door. After 30 minutes of searching... We really started to get concerned, like we were considering waking up my parents to help find her. It was no longer funny. But before I bothered them, I decided to steal my nerves and really search my bedroom. And if she wasn't in there, then perhaps my brother's room. I had to be sure she wasn't in there before getting the authorities, as in my parents, involved. Anyway, I marched in there and flipped on my lamps. There was a hush in there that didn't feel like the usual level of creepiness that I'd somehow gotten used to. It really felt like something was unsettlingly wrong. I suddenly somehow knew Christina was in my brother's room, even though we had checked it before. I didn't actually dare go inside that room, dread and fear clawing at me, so I asked all my friends to come in with me. We pulled the door open, flipped on the lights and stepped in. It was dead silent and cold. There was almost a prickling sensation that washed over us when we walked in as if we'd walk through some kind of sharp cobweb. Instantly, a terror enveloped us like a perverse nausea, as if there was something truly evil laughing silently at us. And it was scary. It was so scary standing in that room, even with the lights on, even surrounded by friends. I looked under the bed, and without direct light casting the shadow away, it was unnaturally pitch black under there. Christina? I called, but there was no answer. I didn't look closer. I was too frightened to stare into the dark for longer. Instead, I looked at my brother's desk. At first, I didn't see anything, but it was like there was an unnatural visual distortion, like a ripple in the shadows, and that's when I saw her. Christina. My headstrong, fearless friend was curled underneath the desk, shaking and sobbing uncontrollably. I hadn't seen her like that before. I hadn't even heard her like that before. None of us had. But as soon as we saw her, everyone rushed to comfort her. She was pale, and very obviously not okay. I remember exactly what her words were, and how she replied in a shaky, weak voice. C Christina, what happened? Are you alright? I... I saw a ghost. We got her out of there, and I ended up waking up my mum because us teenage girls weren't equipped to help Christina calm down. In the end, Christina opted not to go home. Later I learnt her mother was very abusive to her, which may have contributed to why she was so highly affected by the dark entity in my brother's room, and we spent the rest of the evening subdued in the basement, as far away from the haunted room as possible with all the lights on. 
Christina was absolutely traumatized from the encounter and it took several months before she could even talk about what happened. Basically, she went into my brother's room, hid under the desk, but then the dark, evil entity that haunts the room held her down and prevented her from leaving. It spoke to her in some sort of dark language, clearly using words to tear her down. It stood in front of the desk, preventing her from leaving. She was stuck in what felt like hell for half hour until we found her. The entire time I knew her, she never could bring herself to actually describe what the thing looked like. It would just spook her out way too much. It's one thing to have something scary happen to you, but it feels so different when your best friend is traumatized like that. It was definitely scary as hell, and I don't wish it upon anyone. One night in 2005, I was laying in my bed reading a book or playing on my laptop. I can't remember. My younger sister was asleep a few feet away and my mum was downstairs drinking and playing tapes on the stereo in the living room. I heard what sounded like a girl say, Mum? Mum? My mum turned the stereo off and went to the bottom of the stairs and shouted, What is it, Sandy? My little sister. I stepped onto the landing and said, Mum, she's asleep. What was that? Sounded like a little girl. My mum said, Yeah, I heard it too. To this day, I don't know what it was, but there is a story about our property that a little girl was autistic and was kept in a shack with her grandmother on the back part of the property. I don't know how true the story was, but it fit. Was it the ghost girl calling for her mother? The only thing I can say is that it absolutely happened. When I was around 12, I lost my older cousin to cancer. He was only 27. About a year into his diagnosis, colon cancer, he was doing pretty badly. His prognosis was grim, and he knew he was going to die. But he was still able to live alone, visit with us, etc. He'd mow his own yard, swim, and do other basic things. He wasn't bedridden at this point. He was washing dishes when he heard a noise coming from his bedroom, which was at the end of the hallway across the living room. He walked to the edge of the kitchen and could see across the living room and down the hall. There was a person standing there. He said he felt no fear but mostly curiosity because no one should have been in his house. He also said it felt off. His subconscious knew something. It was something different, but that he shouldn't be afraid. He walked down the hall, and the woman was his great-grandma, not my side of the family, who had died when she was pretty young. She smiled at him and gestured into the bedroom, where two more women stood. He didn't recognize either of them. One smiled at him, the other had more of a stern look. They talked briefly. He asked if they were there because he was dying. They were, but she assured him that he still had a bit of time left. She said the other women were family, but didn't name them. She basically told him that she loved him and knew he was scared, but that she would be here for him when it was his time. Then they were gone. No fading or anything, just instantly no longer there. His fiance came home shortly after, and he was just sitting outside in the sun looking happy and calm. She thought he had good medical news. He said that after this experience, he just had so much less fear, and it was like he had taken a pill that covered him in good feelings. He wasn't religious at all. He was very sure it wasn't a dream and wasn't under any treatment. He died about eight months later. As a kid, this scared me a lot. I was always afraid that if I dreamt about a deceased family member, it meant that I was going to die. I find that the thing with paranormal experiences is that you've got to live it to believe it. That's what happened to me. I had this experience in 2016 when I visited Mel, my cousin's home. I was dropping off her mum at home. Since it was a long drive and it started getting dark, they asked me to stay over. The next morning I wake up late and Mel served us breakfast and told me her mum and she were going to the local market and her husband has gone to attend an emergency work. She told me to lock the doors, so I locked the doors and turned on the heater and went to grab some towels in the guest room. When I came back, the switch was turned off. I thought it was faulty switches, which is the only logical explanation when you have no belief in the paranormal. So I switched it on again and entered the shower and locked the door. Halfway through the shower, I heard something, 
and it was like someone knocking on the bathroom doors from the outside, and it freaked me out good and proper. I tried to open the doors, and it was locked from the outside. So I started banging and shouting that I have a phone and that I will call the cops if they don't leave. A few seconds later, the door just opened itself with no lock sound, and I rushed out to check the house for intruders. All the doors and windows were closed, except the front main window, which had crossbars, so there's no way someone could have entered through that except for a cat. They came to the conclusion that the door could have been stuck, so I let it pass despite the fact I heard someone locking it from the outside. Twenty minutes later, Mel and her mum returned and told me to stay over because it's the weekend and she was planning to cook ribs, so I stayed over. In the evening around 3.30, Jeff came home. Later, we were sitting in the patio and discussing about random stuff. Mel went to check on the ribs, and I heard her voice calling, Mum? So I turned right to her mum and saw Mel sitting beside her mum, and I was still hearing Mel's voice clearly from inside the house. For a moment, I was completely frozen. I panicked and said, Do you hear that? Jeff just replied, Don't acknowledge it. It'll stop on its own. I was totally freaked out. What the hell was going on? Mel said they sometimes hear voices or paranormal activity happening around the house, but it didn't occur frequently. I was like, the hell are you for real? You're telling me something unexplainable is happening around you and you're okay with that. Jeff told me there was around 12 to 15 bodies found in the lake during the late 90s before they moved in. The lake is right behind the house, about 30 meters away. And the previous owner of the house was a priest who was involved in exorcism activities which they came to know later. Mel's in-laws brought the property in 2003 without any knowledge of it. Mel and Jeff moved in around 2009 after refurbishment. Jeff said they'd sometimes see a small girl in a white frock giggling and running in the house, and he assured me nothing harmful has ever happened to them in all these years. The moment you find something beyond your understanding is happening around you, it will completely mess you up. I was around 21 at the time, and ever since that incident, I had a feeling of someone following me in the dark, or someone constantly watching me. I had to take medication and do mental exercise for three years, and tried to keep myself around friends and family at all times. This only happened to me once, but left an impression on me. My father and his brother Gary were lifelong dairy farmers in central Wisconsin. We lived close by, and labor was traded during harvest. As I got older, he would send me saying, You have to go help at Gary's today. I grew up and took over the farm, and Cousin Mike took over for his father Gary. Gary died about 15 years ago. Mike sold the dairy herd and found other employment, and I rented his land. My father passed away in 2013. In 2014, I sold the dairy herd. It was an October night in Wisconsin. My cousin Mike started a fire in the wood-fired furnace in the basement and went to bed. His sister had just gotten out of a bad relationship and was living there too. She arrived home from her job at midnight, added some wood to the furnace and went to bed too. Transitioning over to all crops, in the fall of 2015 I was driving around the state, looking at used equipment. What I told everyone is this, passing through the nearest large town, about 25 miles away. I decided to stop and get a meal. Seeing a movie playing that I wanted to see, I stopped to see it, then stopped to local bar and had a few soft drinks before returning home. Passing by his place on the way home at 3 a.m., I saw flames coming out of the chimney and smoke coming from outside the basement door. I dialed 911 and ran in yelling for them to get up, but there was very little smoke in the stairs of the house. Mike and I went downstairs and found an area about three square feet above the furnace on fire. We put it out with a fire extinguisher and water. The fire department arrived to put out the chimney fire. There was very little smoke damage to the house and minimal repairs, but a few more minutes and the fire would have burnt up into the kitchen. The truth is, I got home about 10.30 p.m. and went to bed. Sometime a little before 3 a.m., my father, wearing his bib overalls, something he never wore after retirement, opened my room door, turned on the light and said, Get up. You have to go and help out at Gary's. I remember saying, In the morning. 
He then put on his most authoritative voice and said, No, right now. I sat up bolt upright in bed. My room door was open, the light was on, and the hallway light was on. I tried to brush it off as my imagination, but I knew I had closed the door and turned off the lights, knowing with the adrenaline rush and doubts that I would not get back to sleep. I decided to dress and check on Mike's place, and that is when I saw the fire and smoke. Like I said, I've never told anyone the truth from the fear that no one would have believed me. Just a little thing to add, my father actually died in this very house. I never met my grandfather from my mother's side. He died two months after my older brother was born. When I was five years old, my mother, my brother and I were living at my grandma's house where my grandfather had a small studio. The studio was always locked because when he was young, he hunted deer and his rifles were stored in the studio inside a vault. My grandmother kept the key to the studio at all times. There was this day when my grandpa was away on a trip and my brother and I were at home with my mum, but she was on the other side of the house while we were playing upstairs. We decided to go to the studio, so we knocked on the door and an old man opened for us. He was smoking a pipe while writing something and we talked about the many curious objects in there. My mother went to check on us when she heard noises coming from the studio. The door was locked. She managed to get us out through one of the windows that faced the stairs, and once we were outside, I asked her who was the old man smoking and writing in the studio. Her face turned white, but she was very excited. She answered that he may have been my grandpa. To this day, almost 20 years have passed, and me and my brother vividly remember this moment. Sometimes we talk about it in family reunions. This is particularly special to me because it was the way I met my grandpa. As a kid, I shared a room with my brother. Our room was designed such that our closet was built into a wall that was extended inwards towards the room. Now, the bathroom was on one side of the wall and the foot of my bed was on the other. I never went to the bathroom at night because I once saw a woman in white, dirty clothes with a lot of stains and long hair and burnt skin who did nothing but stand there. Even as a kid, I thought it was just me being afraid of the dark and my mind playing tricks on me. I could never see the corner where the bathroom was without getting up because of the wall in between. And I used to stay in my bed and just hold my bladder for years as I was too scared to get up and peer over the corner. About 10 plus years later, I'm sitting in my new home using my cell phone and I hear my brother tell my mum, Mum, as a kid I used to think our house was haunted because I thought I kept seeing this woman with burnt skin long hair and white clothes with a lot of stains standing near our bathroom door. It must have just been a recurring nightmare. I was in a minor car accident, T-boned at an intersection. About 100 metres before I hit the intersection, I felt a hand on my shoulder and a male tell me to slow down. I was already a few kilometers under the speed limit, doing 55 in a 60, and I was in the car with my then three and a half year old daughter on the passenger side in the rear and would not have been able to touch me through her restraint. The other car hit me at high speed in the front passenger side. If I'd have been going any faster, my daughter would have taken the impact and not survived. A few days later, my very healthy an uninjured daughter was babbling in her bedroom. I went to check on her, and she told me she was just talking to Grandpa Kay. I asked where he was, and she pointed to the corner of the room. I figured it was just her imagination and walked away. About a week after that, she was at my mum's house and said, Hey Grandma, Sonny says to say he's sorry he left, but he's looking after mum for you. Grandpa Kay is my mum's dad. He died before I was born, and mum never really mentioned him or her mum, also dead before I was born. When I was growing up, Grandpa Kay's nickname was Sonny. I didn't even know that. When I was seven, my great grandpa died of natural causes. Now keep in mind, I was a total slob as a child, never cleaning up after myself. I wake up one day in a half asleep daze a few weeks after the funeral 
and I see my great-grandpa putting away all my clean clothes that were on the floor the night before. He says, Hey, sweetie, go back to bed. I'm just cleaning. I wake up for the second time a few hours later. I walk over to where he was standing and see all my clothes that were on the floor had been neatly put away in my dresser. I asked my mum if she had done that, and she said no, and her jaw dropped when I told her what I saw. My next spooky experience was when I was eight. My cousin died from a collision with a semi, as her car lost control on black ice. About a month or so passed, and I put in grief counselling because my young brain couldn't process such an early violent death. One morning at my grandma's again, I wake up in a half-asleep daze, and she's on her knees on the floor smiling at me. She said, When you're ready, I have the kids' table set up for some tea, okay? I don't remember if or how I reacted, but I blinked and she was gone. I didn't go back to sleep this time. The kids' table was set up with cups and pretend drinks and teapots. I asked my grandma if she did this, and she said no. This third story is more tame, but it still freaked me out. My dad died when I was 19, and his ashes were separated between me, my sister, and my brother. Maybe a week into having his ashes, the lights in my apartment began to flicker non-stop. We tried changing the bulbs, calling maintenance to fix it, but nothing worked. I texted my sister and asked her if she had anything weird happen since receiving his ashes. She had the same problem with her lights, and she'd never experienced it in her house. But I knew it's frowned upon to contact the dead, but the flickering lights were annoying me no end. I said out loud, If you're here, Dad, could you please give me any other sign that doesn't involve messing with my stuff? I then got a knock on my bedroom door at 2am. I was home alone, and the security footage showed no sign of a break-in. My final story was at my mum's house. It's haunted too. We've had ghosts since we moved in when I was a kid. There are very clear footsteps coming from the upstairs all the time. And this arse of a ghost likes to slam open and shut kitchen cupboards, Paranormal Activity 2 style. Some ghosts, I guess, are just inconsiderate. Around 1pm, my brother and I were at a grocery store, and we bumped into one of his friends from high school. They greeted each other and made some small talk. I said hi since we were schoolmates. That night, around 8pm, my brother received a call that his friend, who was in a coma for 12 hours, just died. He thought he was receiving a prank call, since we had just met about seven hours earlier. What's even creepier is that two of my brother's friends interacted with him on the same day. Maybe he was trying to say farewell to his friends. My granddad used to live in a cottage which had something in it. Cliché things would happen. The piano would play random keys at night. The decorative plates would move. The cat would hiss randomly at the same spot in the house. The strangest thing was a door between the master bedroom and the small box room, my room whenever I stayed there. For some reason, the door in between the two rooms would always be open in the morning. Now, my granddad and grandma were quite private people and liked to have that door shut when I would stay. My granddad would always tell me off for opening it in the night, even though I swear I hadn't. So one night we talked about it, and I suggested putting something in front of the door so it couldn't open easily. Great, good idea. So my granddad took some books and stacked them in front of the door so they wouldn't open that easy, or not without making a lot of noise anyway. We said goodnight, and off to bed we went. The next morning the books are still standing up, but the doors open. We were obviously freaked out, the next night, he did the same, books in front of the doors and off to bed. In the morning, all of the books were knocked over. Some had even been put in different rooms of the house, and some were in the shed, some 50 meters away. After my grandparents had moved out, they found some records in a local church about the house. Apparently, a girl had been pushed down the stairs by her mother and died. They believed this was what was causing things to happen. The husband of the couple that moved in after them had had a heart attack three weeks after moving in, after being supposedly happy and healthy. My girlfriend and I were driving back to her parents' house when I was probably 17 or 18. We went down this one road, and she screamed for me to swerve. I figured she'd seen a deer. 
When I turned my head, I saw a woman dressed in white pushing a white bassinet. She was also holding a boy's hand and was wearing white. They weren't in my rear view mirror. When I was 12, I can still remember this event vividly. Mum had caught me up playing video games at night for two nights before when the computer was in the kitchen. I was set up so that if you turned to the right, you would see the door to the kitchen. I was messaging some friends online when I see someone from the corner of my eye. I scoot back already, prepping to get yelled at to try and explain why I was up at 3 a.m. again, except when I turned, I wasn't looking at my mum. I was looking at a much older woman with soft eyes and short curly hair. I remember freezing and the chills of fear as I realized what I was looking at. She was white, pure white overall. She looked at me, looked around the kitchen, and then smiled sweetly before turning and sort of dissolving into the air. I stayed in my chair staring slack-jawed for five minutes before I worked up the guts to turn on the light. No one was there, all the doors were locked. She hadn't made a noise, and I went back to message my friend that I just saw a ghost, and she went, lol, okay, sure. I was wide awake, and I know what I saw but it still boggles my mind. This is one of my buddy's stories. We were at a brewery with some friends and our spouses, and I asked him a question about his ex. Someone made a joke because I dated his ex at one point in high school. I don't regret it really, but it was a dumb decision because it did hurt our friendship at the time. Anyway, I remember sitting in the couch with her, and she told me, that when she was a kid, she had an imaginary friend she could legitimately see. Her name was Emily, and she had very long black hair. She told me she had a friend over who claimed to be able to see paranormal things and claimed to see Emily. So while we were talking about that, I asked him if he'd ever seen Emily or heard her being spoken about. I mean, him and his ex dated for years. He took a big gulp of his sour drink. Yeah, man. I know you remember how her room was laid out and all. Well, I was staying the night at her house and I woke up and she was sitting there in the mirror brushing her hair. I'm thinking, damn, it's awfully late to be brushing your hair, but I just rolled over into the bed and as I looked, she was there sleeping next to me. I rolled back over and no one was in the mirror. That's when I realized it was Emily. My biological dad lives in a creepy old farmhouse he renovated. I was helping him build out the office late one night. He went to the bathroom and I kept plunking away. I was on the floor and set my hammer down and I felt something, a presence, and looked to where I thought someone would be, but there was nothing. I reach back down for my hammer and it's out of arm's reach, maybe five feet further than where I had set it down. I hadn't moved it at all. He comes back after he's finished and I tell him what just happened. He laughs and says, ha. <laughs> The little girl must be playing with you. A uh, little girl, what? He tells me every now and then he hears a little girl laughing and has even seen her. She's always wearing the same pair of overalls and she just kind of wanders around upstairs. I'm not one to believe in the paranormal, but I have no explanation other than a little girl's girl just wanted to play. My dad passed away at the ripe age of 99. My dad had always been a penny guy and would always pick them up. He lived through the Great Depression and his family had always been poor. Anyway, he never believed in wasting money. The day after his funeral, I was in my room with my son looking at some photos. A penny fell off the dresser and rolled across the floor. Not sure what knocked it off, but I jokingly told my son, well, I guess your granddaddy's letting us know that he made it. We laughed it off. But after that, we began finding pennies every day. Every time one of us would pick it up, laugh and say, guess granddaddy was here today. The following year, my son turned 21. He was working that day at Six Flags over Texas as a train engineer on their two antique steam locomotives. At the end of his shift, he drove home and found me getting ready to go out for his birthday party dinner. He said, mom, you know how we always joke about granddaddy leaving those pennies? I said, sure, I just found one earlier today. He asks me to hold out my hand and into it, he puts a handful of pennies. He then said, count them. 
which I did. They were exactly 21 pennies. He said, I found these on the last run I made to the train today. Ghost or odd coincidence? Doesn't really matter to me, but it made my son happy. And that made me feel great. Maybe my dad really was reaching out to say happy birthday to his only grandson. My mum told me this story when I was younger, but now refuses to talk about it. This was before I was born. My sister was a newborn at the time, and my mum stayed home for a while after maternity leave while my dad worked. She was new to Canada and eager to make friends and eventually get to know our neighbours. One had a seven-year-old girl. My mum would often visit and invite her over for ice cream to the point it became a reoccurring thing after school. Unfortunately, the kid got into an accident and passed away. Time kind of passed until one day my mum heard the door knock. She peeped through the door hole and shockingly saw the little girl. Out of panic, she kind of stumbled backwards with no words coming out of her mouth. Frozen, the little girl asks if she can come in for her ice cream. My mum claims she told the little girl to go away and she wasn't real. The girl persisted, this time knocking harder on the door. The knocks got harder and harder, eventually turning into thundering smashes. The door frame was shaking and the door itself looked like it was about to split down the middle. Then suddenly everything stopped. It's dead quiet and everything is calm and motionless. That's when my mum claims she heard the most evil roaring and terrifying voice belt out from behind the door. Let me in. I'm a skeptic paranormal investigator, and I've had a lot of experiences, most which can be rationally explained away. However, I've had two outstanding experiences, about 14 years apart. The first was in the year 2000. I lived in a house that was, for lack of a better term, haunted. Lots of things went on there, but it was the night I saw and heard a full-bodied apparition walk down the stairs in front of me and a friend. It got to the bathroom, turned, walked right past us and disappeared as it went into our living room. I've never seen anything like that before. It was one of those things where you have plenty of time to say to yourself, is this really happening? And in that moment, all the stories I heard seemed to culminate in this reality. I thought, oh my God, this is what they were talking about. The second was in 2014. I was at one of our regular stops called the Shanley Hotel. I've stayed there with the investigation team several times, but on Halloween night, I woke up to the sound of a woman positively sobbing on the other side of my bedroom wall. It was coming from an area that used to be a catwalk that was now sealed. It was 3.35 in the morning, and it went on for four minutes, but felt like an eternity. Of course, I couldn't sleep after that, and it wasn't over. About 45 minutes later, the activity continued, when I clearly heard a man and woman talking right in my room, followed by the sound of various people stopping and running around outside my bedroom door and saying, Hey. I checked out the entire area, and there was no evidence of trickery. We knew the place inside and out, but had access to the entire building. I considered every possible way it could have been a trick, but it just didn't make sense. I think a lot of people get carried away and blow their experiences out of proportion. I've had plenty of my own that I couldn't really make a big deal about, but those two experiences have always been with me, and I think about them often. When I was a teenager, I had to study weeks before exams. So when I was home alone, I was sitting in my room, door open, so that the cat could come and go as it pleased. I was studying in silence, and after a while I became aware of sounds downstairs, and it sounded like someone was walking around down there. Not footsteps, but the swishing of clothing. All the windows in the house were shut, so I thought that maybe the maid had popped in for some reason. She had a key and lived across the road, so I went down to investigate, and no one was there, and the noises had stopped. I walked through the entire downstairs of our house as it wasn't very big and it didn't take very long. Eventually, I was standing at the bottom of the stairs about to walk back up to my room when I heard the same swishing sound again, but now it was upstairs. 
so repeat, and I looked upstairs and no one. Again I could hear movement downstairs. As I walked up and down all over the house multiple times, I could not find what made the noise. A few years later my brother was the one studying at home, and the exact same thing happened to him. My parents split up when I was a kid, and I went to my father's new home when I was something like 15. I'm 30 now. This house had quite a story, and my father as well. I don't really know if there's an equivalent in English, but there was a magnesteur, a healer. To be honest, I grew up with a lot of doubts about his gift, but he actually helped a lot of people. So I went along with it. He claimed several times he had the capacity to sense the souls around him. He would also talk about his guides. He was a believer, a lot more than I. I generally think most stories are interesting, but probably nonsense. Anyway, he brought the house. That was almost in ruins. He brought it from a friend of the village he was in, as we grew up in the countryside of France in the Berry. It was a particularly renowned village because many artists and potters lived there. It was a big business. Well, apparently the previous owner was a potter too, but an eccentric one. He made an entire wall on the house with clay pots mounted on it. I heard he was buried in this village and he eventually killed himself in this very house. His spouse didn't want to sell it to any other potters because she thought that they were responsible for his death, so she sold it to my father. When I came in the first time, I just felt like being in an old country house without anything special. The stone floor was cold, there was a big wood stove and my father made a mezzanine in front of his bedroom. It was a house for one person with a living room mixed with the kitchen the bathroom on the east, and his waiting room, or consultation room for his healing sessions on the west, and just the bedroom upstairs with the mezzanine that I would sleep in. We spent a few hours in the living room first. I was walking a bit and at some point I thought I saw something by the window. It was just from the corner of my eye, but I was sure I saw something. I went to see what it was, and my father just said, Oh, you saw him too? Then he told me about the guy and his story. He told me several other experiences. One especially stuck with me. When he was taking the measures to install the new windows, he heard something telling him, tu t'es trompé, as in, you made a mistake. He quickly dismissed it and thought that it had just been in his head. Then he went to order his windows and indeed there was a mistake. He had other experiences like things falling, voices, or generally the feeling that he wasn't alone, but I guess it's not exactly the most authentic proof. A few weeks later, I went to sleep on his mezzanine. Actually, I couldn't sleep because my father in his bedroom snores like a bear. It was like 2 a.m. and not being able to sleep at all when I heard something downstairs. The front door opened while I knew it was locked. At first I felt scared, but mostly because I thought someone was housebreaking. But then, when I heard something, I became even more frightened. There were footsteps. It sounded like they were barefoot. I could tell someone was walking downstairs, dragging their feet. So at some point I had to verify and I slowly walked to the stairs and stuck my head out to see if there was anyone there. And I saw a foot out of the shadow, a pale, naked foot in front of the first step. I was completely petrified. I don't know how long I saw it for, but at some point it turned back and I quickly went to bed. I heard the steps again, but I didn't hear the door this time. A few hours later, I managed to have the courage to dress and go downstairs. The door was closed, the wood stove was off, and the living room was extremely cold. And just when I went to verify if the door was locked, I heard more steps, so I ran upstairs again. The next morning I told my father about it, and he just laughed. Yeah, he comes visiting sometimes, he's probably just testing you. My father thinks I also have gifts like him, but I honestly don't believe it, at least I don't want to. I know I was completely sober when I experienced that that night. It just made me think a lot about it. Anyway, my father still lives in the house, but apparently he doesn't have much more paranormal activity than that. He says the previous owner probably got bored and moved on.
Occasionally, when he tells the story, I think the guy was probably really bored that time I saw him. In any case, let's not meet again, spooky ghost. As a kid, I used to be pretty scared of aliens or ghosts or whatever, but I grew up in San Diego and moved to Las Vegas. I went back to visit, and the job I had at the time was at Starwood Hotels, so they had a lot of super cheap employee rates and around the world, and one of those was for the US grant in downtown San Diego. And the hotel is super nice for 59 a night. And one morning, very early, I hear a seriously demonic voice, but I'm pretty groggy, my eyes are closed, somewhere between waking and sleeping, and I kind of ignore it, but then I wake up and had remembered that voice right away. Then there were some oddities that happened as I awoke, like literally articles of clothing. I had just taken off the bedside and a pillow were miraculously and by themselves in the bathroom. So it's not like, oh, I must have left them there. And how was that pillow there? It was just on the bed. So I sort of dismissed it all, but with the demonic voice in my mind. So then I go to dinner with my friends and I'm telling them all of this when we all look up on our phones haunted places in San Diego and the US grant shows up and reads, it's not unusual for housekeeping staff to report their cleaning supplies moved while tending to other things in different guest rooms. Some guests have claimed they've seen the ghost of a man standing over them while they're in bed. The man is reportedly heavy set, dons a black suit and quickly appears and then vanishes. Problems with light flickerings are frequently reported as well as hearing random footsteps and other obscure noises. Well, maybe it was paranormal after all. Saturday 8th, 2021, May. 6.45 p.m. I used to work in a large warehouse that didn't have many people in it on Saturdays and Sundays. After the daytime people leave, which happened sometime between four and five, by not many people, I mean none. Well, none in my massive section of the building, since there wasn't a whole lot to do. I hid in the back corner where the cameras couldn't see me and just dicked around until the last half hour of my shift when I actually had something to do. When it's windy, the walls will sometimes creak and groan against their support. I had been hiding in this corner for quite a number of weekends, so had gotten used to the noises. Then from the back wall that runs perpendicular to the aisle, I heard a loud woman sigh. Not a lot of women work here, but I brushed it off as being the wind acting funny on the walls. Again, even though I've literally never heard anything like that before, it was 6.45. Then an hour later, I was still there in the corner, reading a creepy ask reddit thread, when from a few slots into the aisle directly in front of me came, oh, hello, in the exact same voice, but there was no one there. If there was, not only would I have seen them coming from quite a way away, but they would have tripped on the motion center light and everything would have been illuminated around me. My first thought, was that it was the wind, but it wasn't windy. Besides, I would have heard the usual creaks and groans in tandem with it. I'm also pretty sure the wall wasn't going to sound like a woman's voice, especially in two separate spots. The thing is, directly in front of me was metal racking. From where I was, I was only likely to be noticed once someone started walking down that aisle and got near the end, which was where the voice came from. She sounded surprised as though she wasn't expecting anyone to be there, and though she had the warehouse to herself. I tried to gain the courage to say something, but couldn't, because the thought of hearing a response weirded me out too much. I wasn't as scared as I was startled. I wanted to talk to her, but just really wasn't mentally ready for it. What if I tried to say something to her and she responded? Would I be mentally ready to handle that? Then a few minutes later, I heard her further down the aisle. Three more syllables, but no idea what she said. She was walking away from me. Well, screw you then, I rather humorously thought to myself. I couldn't quite will myself to sit back down and go back to Reddit. So I hung around for a bit and eventually left 20 minutes later. I don't think the warehouse is haunted. The various people have seen and heard various things over time. 
From their accounts, I'm sure there are different entities, but they wander the area and only show up in the warehouse when it's empty. Most encounters happen near the holidays, so it wasn't unusual in that regard. I continued to sit in that corner every Saturday and Sunday for the remainder of my time I worked there, and I never heard anything again, which was a little bit disappointing. I was on my way home from a 12-day vacation, driving a pickup pulling a fifth-wheel RV. It was about 11pm on a Saturday night in late July, and I was about two hours from home, trying to make it home yet that night. I was in a very rural area where there was almost no one living on about a 20-mile stretch of road. There was only one combination gas station slash tavern slash motel, and it's heavily wooded on both sides. It's a county maintained and fenced at the tree line. The shallow ditches had been mowed and the grass was about six inches high. I only saw a couple of cars on this whole stretch. I was going at about 50 because it was heavily populated with deer. I saw movement ahead, so I immediately slowed down. As I passed, I saw a young woman, tall, fit brunette, wearing a cropped top, pleated skirt and stockings, walking with traffic just off the shoulder. I immediately thought she had car trouble, though I had not passed a car that had broken down. Or perhaps it was a fight with her boyfriend. I pulled to the side of the road, hit the emergency flashes and grabbed the flashlight to check on her. When I got to the rear of the camp and no one was there, I looked around for her. There was no way she could have reached the back of the RV before I did. So she could not have been hiding there. She could not have hidden the ditches as the grass was too short, and she could not have made it all over the fence without a light. In the little time it took me to get the rear of the RV, I looked out where she'd been walking and saw no sign that the dew on the grass had been disturbed. I drove the rest of the way home, with the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. Myself and a few friends went for a drive at night and parked on a country road just outside of town, right near a small bridge. We were just chatting away and hanging out in the car looking at the window, and I remember one of us pointing and saying, Shh, be quiet. Do you hear that? We all went silent and immediately heard what sounded like a crying woman. This freaked me out, and of course everyone was freaking out too in the car. I remember we were just looking everywhere outside the car to try and see something, but none of us could see anything. Then we all heard and felt what seemed like the bottom of the car being scratched. That combined with the crying. Yeah, panic ensued. True story. Also, fun note, that car was probably the fastest a car has ever gone in reverse. When me and my sister used to share a bunk bed, We both saw dark figures looking at us through a window on the second floor of the house. And unless some guy had a ladder and was trying to break into our house, I'm convinced it was a ghost. Whenever I'd walk or drive past a cemetery, weird stuff would happen to me later that day. It was almost as if something followed me home. And my basement had a door in it with glass panels that led to nowhere. It used to lead to an underground tunnel that connected the house across the alley but it was filled in years ago. One time I abruptly woke up and saw a face looking at me through one of the glass panels. And sometimes I see weird lights coming through and there are no lights. Recently I was sleeping down there due to hot weather and having no AC in my room. And I dreamt that I was in there being watched in my sleep. Every month on the 5th, Since I moved into this house, I always hear someone screaming, let me in, in a distorted voice outside my door. I've lived here for five years. I know these patterns. It manifests every fifth of the month. When it appears, you can smell it before you hear it, since it smells like smoke, garlic, and at first, I thought the stove was on and it was burning. But in my exhaustion, told myself it was a fire and I bought my deer killer just in case. And when I was about to open the door, I hear banging and screaming and a man saying, let me in. And that's when I jumped to my senses and found my compact ladder 
and hopped out the window. This persisted for a while, and it always stays in the range of 11, 12 p.m. to 4 a.m. This happened for three months, and I thought a psycho was in my house, and I had it searched multiple times by the police. Me and my boys, the police, found nothing. So I installed a security system, and once again, when I reviewed the footage, it had been like it had never been recorded. It skipped the second it started. I wish I knew what was going on here. I found an old headstone on our property as a kid. That same night, I saw two ladies watching me through our family room window. We locked eyes, and as we did so, they turned into mist and were gone. I wasn't immediately scared either, like they were good spirits and I knew it. But it still creeps me out to this day, though. When I was in college and studying at home, I remember needing to find a particularly old 17th century play called The Alchemist by Ben Johnson. Me being poor and stupid, I didn't buy the class textbook, so I had to find it on my own. I was at my desk, and behind me was a walk-in closet, which I used as a library as I collected old and rare books. I remember thinking that I saw the play in an old anthology of literature that I owned, and quickly pushed that out of my mind, as I thought it would take too much effort for a text that was surely available on Project Gutenberg Online. I hear a loud thump behind me, and turn around in my chair and walk into the closet, and on the floor was a book turned open, with the pages facing up. You have to understand this part for it to truly sink in that my closet was lined with shelves that extended far enough back that no part of my books were hanging over the edge. I was meticulous and very careful with them, as some were relics. I looked at the book in disbelief, and when I saw that it was the anthology of literature I was thinking of, and not only that, but the header of the page showed it was a page of the play, The Alchemist, I knew this was something truly out of the ordinary and unexplainable. I have more experiences in this house, but one thing will remain with me, as irrefutable proof that something intelligent understood my inner thoughts and caused that to happen. In the same house, on the day my father died, my grandma also tells a story of how pictures in the house were flying off the walls at her. My dad hated her guts, and she's always been an honest person. I don't know if I'd call what happened to me an experience with a ghost per se, but I thought it would be worth mentioning. I was around 15 to 16 in the middle of the day, and I saw a guy crossing the street in a sprint, and a school bus ran him over, and never stopped. It was like I was the only one who says the bus ran over the man, and when I looked back, to my horror, there was nothing on the floor. The bus driver didn't even attempt to stop as the man sprinting across the street for the bus ran him over, like there was nothing on the road and kept on going. I was in the back seat behind my mum. While she was driving, I asked her if she saw the bus run over the man, and she said she didn't see any man. I am 18 now, and still can't explain what I saw that day, and it was then that I began to believe in ghosts. This happened in 2011. Me and my older brother were playing hide and seek, and my old house had a very long hallway that had rooms to a laundry room, a bathroom, and me and my brother's bedrooms. Anyway, we were playing and I looked into the hallway, and all the way back into the laundry room I saw half of a dark figure, with long black hair and face paint. And as soon as it turned to look at me, it slowly went back into the laundry room, and so I investigated and saw nothing in there. My dad believes our house was haunted by Native Americans because the land we live on was close to a reservation. Plus, my dad and older brother also experienced paranormal stuff as well. Like one time, my grandma was sleeping in our house when she woke up and saw a hand floating, reaching for her, and she yelled out, El Diablo, or something like that. But my uncle told me that she believed that she was connected to the other world. My uncle also told me that our old house gave him a weird feeling. 
Also, we moved from that house in 2014. But in June of 2021, I went to the bathroom to wash my hands, and right when I was about to put soap on my arm, I looked as I felt a burning sensation, and I saw three scratch marks that were red slowly appear from nothing. I freaked out and told my sister. I was only six to eight years old, and I was on my way home after having lunch with my grandparents and mother. We share half of the same house, so I asked my mum if I could go back home. So I left and went inside my house, opened the door and walked a bit. When I reached the diner slash living room, I saw a child about my size and same age, but looked completely different. White, like the old pictures that were in black and white. She used some kind of really old looking dress, almost Victorian children's style. Her hair looked really curly in pigtails. I stared at the kid, feeling like I was watching something that really shouldn't or wasn't there. After I saw her, I took off running to the other side of the house where my grandparents and mother were. I remember that I was crying to them about some random kid in the house, and the kid looked like she had some old and glowing white skin complexion. My mum never really believed me. And she recalled that when we moved into the house, I told her that some kid always looked at me from under my bedroom door. So she said to just ask what she wants. And I told her that the kid told me that she wanted to protect me. There's always the explanation of an overactive imagination, but I don't recall that ever happening. And remember these events quite vividly. I rented what used to be the master bedroom of a house built around 1970. The current owners made it into a studio with an attached bath and mini kitchen. I lived there for a year on my own before my husband moved in once we were married. Nothing ever happened, but on our wedding day when I woke up, I found a plant that I'd had for many years had somehow flown off my bookshelf and apparently committed suicide in the middle of my floor. There were no earthquakes here, nothing had moved, and it was very strange. Okay, so he moves in and weird stuff starts happening. Like the TV will begin turning on and off by itself. A strong smell of cigarette smoke starts to appear when I'm alone, despite the windows being closed and fans blowing in my face. My husband made a canvas print of one of our wedding pictures, and it kept flying off the wall. I had a tabletop fan that was sitting six feet between both my husband and I, I didn't move or shake it, and it was my husband that turned it around to point it at him, as he was quite hot and I was studying with flashcards and didn't want them blowing away. 30 seconds later, I feel the wind blow on me. So I look up and say, Babe, I thought you were hot and wanted the fan. I did. Well, why is it pointing at me then? We both got the same wide-eyed look and realized that the fan had spun 180 degrees in less than a minute by itself. It was creepy, but none of this ever felt dangerous. More like it was a man who was annoyed that my husband had moved in. I guess the ghost wanted me all to himself. We lived across the street from one of the oldest cemeteries in Southern California. It was just strange little things. We thought that maybe it was the owner's remote controls turning off our TV at one point. But then we figured out that their TV was in the opposite direction of ours and a different brand, so yeah. The house I grew up in as a kid. The previous owners that died were an older woman with a piano. There were several times I'd wake up to a piano playing. I'd walk around the house and everything would be off and everyone asleep. She seemed to really like playing Moonlight Sonata. When I was 15, in honors chorus, I was about to go on stage and sing in front of an auditorium full of people. We were all backstage warming up, and another teenager starts playing Moonlight Sonata on piano. It's at that point I almost crapped myself. I still did my solo, but hearing that really unnerved me for days. At that point, it had been a 10-year gap since hearing the song. My parents were not into classical piano, so an auditory hallucination would have been almost impossible. It happened on and off for almost a year, and it was different songs, but Moonlight Sonata was certainly the most frequently played. I was in a burial site on a tour. The area was large and empty. 
in a field. I was standing quietly looking around when I heard something whispering in my ear. Then it moved to my other ear. I wish I could tell you what. It was a set of breathy whispered syllables that rushed back and forth with a staticky element between my ears. Being that this was a potter's field of mental institution patients from the 1800s, it makes me wonder what the spirit was trying to convey. The whispering swiped back and forth almost like a train barreling down the tracks, but just between my ears. It was definitely a woman. I seriously couldn't make out the words, and I tried to shake my head of it until I noticed that the person near me had a look on their face that made me realize he heard exactly what I had too. We looked at one another wide-eyed and exchanged the exact same account of what had happened. Maybe if I'd have experienced this by myself, I would have come up with an excuse. But as it was also confirmed by another person, I knew it was real. We have a ghost at work. We've never named him, but my co-workers and I all agree he's an older guy between the age of 60 to 70. He does things like move small items the kids wouldn't be able to reach, like on a waist-high counter. Call your name quietly and a few times we've heard a cry or seen a child-sized figure run past when everyone is in the garden asleep or in their eyesight. I say hello in the morning when I get in. He seems pretty harmless and kind of protective over the children. Can't hurt to be polite though, right? I know exactly who in my family is walking around based on their footsteps. But one night, pretty late, I heard someone walking down the hallway outside my bedroom with slow, heavy footsteps that definitely didn't belong to anyone in my household. Of course, no one was there. I heard this for the next few nights, and there was a couple of months break before I heard it again, and then nothing for ages. Myself and my younger brother were the only ones who had heard creepy footsteps. Recently, everyone but my dad went away for the weekend, and the first night he had to get up with a baseball bat because he thought someone had broken into the house and was creeping down the hallway, but once again, no one was there. It only happened in the hallway for some reason. Starts at the end of the hall and stops at the end. My boyfriend and I were in our house eating dinner. Our front door was open and the screen door was closed. We heard the screen door open and slam shut. We both went to the living room and out onto the front porch. As soon as we went out, we were hit by a thick, cloying, floral, sweet smell. It smelled like funeral flowers, if you've ever smelled that scent before, just overwhelmingly strong and concentrated right in front of our house. We both felt kind of creeped out, so we went back into the house and into our bedroom. I sat on the edge of our bed, which faced the hallway, and one of our dogs came and hopped onto my lap. My boyfriend and I were speculating about what the door slamming and the smell was all about. I was looking straight ahead into the hall during a lull in the conversation, and I saw a dark shadow pass down the hall, go past our bedroom door, and into another room at the end of the hall. It was just tall, vaguely human-shaped and solid black, like the area it was in, just had all the light sucked from it, and you couldn't see through it. Our dog saw it too. He went nuts, sparking and growling and whining. For some reason, that scared me more than anything, that he saw it too. I started crying and said I wanted to leave the house, so we got our dogs into our car and left. We were having plumbing problems anyway, so we ended up just staying in a hotel room that night. When we came back the next day, things seemed totally normal and nothing like that happened since. It's definitely been one of the spookiest things I've ever experienced. Whenever me and my siblings are home alone downstairs, we hear footsteps pacing back and forth up the stairs. Whenever we go on our stairway, the footsteps stop abruptly. Also, sometimes when we get home from vacation to find one or two of our windows open, as we live in a safe neighborhood, this isn't really a problem, but my mom is convinced that it's the work of ghosts, because we would obviously never leave our windows open before going on road trips. Our attic is far too small and dangerous for a stowaway. Plus, the only entrance to it is in my mum's closet, which has boxes and stuff, and is impenetrable to get through without making a ton of noise or being extremely obvious. 
We also have four cats and dogs, so no human or vermin are running around in our house undetected. The footsteps are loud stomps, stomps that pace back and forth and aren't human, but stop abruptly when I reach the stairs. It's not like something scuttles away and hides. It simply stops. My office was in the basement of a building next to an 150-year-old cemetery. The job involved handling old historic materials. On several occasions, my co-workers and I experienced unexplainable phenomena. Co-workers saw the air rippling behind my desk. Another co-worker quit after seeing a shadowy figure stalk them at night when nobody else should have been in the building. Objects have moved on their own. And once, two people swear they saw a pen levitating in the air for a split second. I was skeptical until late one night. I was leaving, and just a step behind the other person who was in the office. Suddenly, I see a foggy apparition about five or six feet, standing about 30 to 40 feet in front of me. It had had a rough outline of a human. The air had turned unbearably cold, and the hair on my neck went straight up, and just as quickly as it appeared, it vanished. Later that night, several terrible events happened around me and to loved ones, and I knew, whatever it was, was not happy that I saw it. I encountered the ghost of a little girl once. She was in my parents' old house, which is where I grew up as a teenager. I heard a clear voice wake me up from my sleep a few times saying, Hello? I was never afraid, and I had never thought much about it until it happened a few times. Then one night, she laughed two distinct syllables. Hehe. <laughs> I felt bad for her, honestly. Both my ghost and yours. Imagine being a kid, trapped, on the other side of a place you know, unable to do anything about it. You're alone. No one can meaningfully interact with you. And worst of all, are all the other things that occasionally wander this side of reality with you. It's got to be terrifying. My great-grandma died in 92. My auntie got the phone call that night. The next morning, my then three-year-old cousin came out of her room and sleepily mentioned, Mama, Grandma Rose, as in the one who just died, visited me last night. She said to tell you that her hip doesn't hurt anymore. I used to see ghosts outside my apartment complex all the time. To give you a bit of context, they would be outside dressed in 50s style clothing. They would be driving up in old cars, go through gates and then vanish into thin air. There were also two guys packing up old pickup with camping gear. They would just be outside and suddenly disappear. I wanted to record it once, but when I got my phone out, they were already gone. I know this is a very convenient thing to say, but it's honestly a true account of what happened. When I was a toddler, I got sapped on the back by something. I've never screamed so loud. My parents looked back and there was a big red handprint on my back. They think it was something that my aunt saw which appeared, allegedly, like an old woman wearing a cloak, but had a tail dragging behind her, walking from their room to the bathroom. I'll never know for sure, but it definitely freaked the family out. My partner and I were sitting in bed. The room is dim, but not pitch, and there's a mirror hanging on the closet door to our right. Like if I turn my head, I see myself. We were watching TV, when I see something huge and black glide by the mirror, kind of like no face from Spirited Away, but without the adorable mask. I thought to myself, as paranormal things aren't uncommon for me, ah, okay, just gonna let that one go. Did I even really see that? Am I hallucinating? I didn't say anything out loud, but my partner says, did you just see something weird go by the mirror? And they described exactly what I saw. My Uncle Bill died when I was four. He and I were incredibly close. He was my favorite, and I was his. I lived in Colorado, but we went down to Alabama for his funeral. I'm 31 now, so I don't remember him actually visiting me. 
but I do remember telling my mum, Mum, Uncle Bill says it's going to snow. My mum calmly reminded me that Uncle Bill was gone, and we were in Alabama in 1995. It doesn't snow here. Uncle Bill and I got the last laugh when we woke up the next day and it was snowing in Alabama. Very lightly. But it was there. When I was living in college, my roommate and I started hearing tapping coming from inside the walls behind our closet in our dorms. It was always around 3 a.m. and it got worse and hangers in the closet began to move. The worst was when we thought inviting a friend to sleep with us in the room would make it stop. That night with three people in the room, a book literally fell off the shelf. A hat also fell off the desk with no wind. You'd think it stopped with someone random in the room, but it actually got worse. Supposedly, 20 years earlier, someone hung themselves in the closet in the same dorm we were living in. I had never experienced anything paranormal to that extent, but it was all the proof I needed that there was indeed something out there. I was on vacation with my parents, where my brother and I were sleeping in the same room together. It was kind of a rural area, where it gets very dark at night. We went to bed in the evening, and we were still talking in the dark about random things. Suddenly, I saw a blindingly bright green flash. My brother stopped talking in the middle of his sentence because he saw it too. Both of us were quite startled and also completely blinded for a few seconds. After confirming that we both saw the same thing, we went to wake up our parents. Unfortunately, there wasn't much to tell them other than there was a weird light. So since we didn't find anything, they just went back to bed and my brother and I didn't fall asleep too well that night. To this day, I have no explanation for what happened. I thought it could have been the headlight of a car, but we don't remember hearing an engine and it only happened once over the course of three weeks, so that seems unlikely. We still tell this story to people. Sometimes, and usually, they don't believe it, or chalk it up to the wild imagination of children. But we were 15 at the time. It didn't quite make me believe in ghosts, but to us it was a pretty spooky experience. When my wife was one, she gently touched a picture of her deceased grandfather, who she would not have known anything about at that point, as no one had explained death to her yet, and they didn't talk about death in deceased family members in the family. And she said that she'd met him before she was born, and that he was nice to her. He is the person she was named for, and that incident made me feel really happy. Whenever anyone asks what happens to you when you die, my answer is now, I have no idea. But it's the same place you were in before you were born. When she was two, she was talking to someone, apparently a little boy that wasn't there. When I asked her about her imaginary friend, she solemnly told me that he lived in our house a long time ago. I asked no further questions, but about a year later, after we had moved out, our neighbour caught his kid talking to an imaginary friend. When we asked him, he was told that the boy she was playing with was my daughter's friend. At least, if it was, the ghost was friendly. I used to work in a bar that wasn't exactly a jail, but temporarily held people awaiting court and sentencing. Everyone had a story about that place, who they called Sebastian. Another thing to note is it used to be a holding jail a long time ago too, but had since been converted into a bar. The first time I saw Sebastian, I looked down the stairs while I was opening and saw some legs in black pants and smart shoes. The ceiling obscured his torso upwards and when I went downstairs to ask how he got in, he ran down the hall and vanished. A few other members of staff mentioned seeing a man in a black suit he would be in the bar after hours while you'd be cleaning, but when you'd approach to speak to him, he'd turn the corner and disappear. Sometimes after closing, you'd hear someone ringing the bells on staff members' bikes downstairs, or you'd hear a crash and the bikes would be moved to a different place. Other times, you'd see a man in black duck into the office, and by the time you'd enter, he'd be gone. The clincher that convinced us all was that it was just a thing we all believed because we all joked about it so often. One day, 
the new chef came. They didn't speak much English and would leave once dinner service was over, so they never engaged in the Sebastian stories. One day, one of them asked about a man in black who kept leaning on the ordering window while they were cleaning. Sebastian was pretty chill though. He never scared us or did anything mean. I think he just liked hanging out. I've always thought ghosts were fake. My mum always got aggressively religious when I'd say something about ghosts in the house. But one time in the summer, she went to visit Mexico with her family. And my brother and father were the only ones left at home. I made some macaroni and served my dad a plate as he asked. I sat on the couch with my brother and watched him play Call of Duty. When my dad came home, he sat down to eat. He said the plate was moving by itself. Of course, me and my brother didn't believe him as he often exaggerates situations, but he claimed more than once that the plate was moving. Me and my brother denied this, but curiously after a while, my brother got up to see what he was talking about and he jumped back and told me that the plate did in fact move. When I got up and saw it moving back and forth along the round table edges, I immediately started praying. My dad called out the names of my brother and uncle, Pat and Reuben, who have passed away recently, and had told us afterwards that like him, Reuben loved mac and cheese. When the plate stopped moving, I grabbed a knife and started circling the plate there were no strings attached. I had lifted the plate and there was no water under it either. It couldn't have slipped or had a pressure change that would have moved the plate. I've always doubted religion, but whatever it was moving that plate absolutely dipped after praying. I still don't have enough faith in religion now, but everyone always requests more information whenever I tell them the story that the ghost tried to steal my dad's macaroni. I had a few strange things happen at a house I lived in when I was a teenager. Stuff would fly off my desk when I was in bed. When getting stuff from the basement, I would almost always get physically ill stepping in one hallway on the basement. And then when moving out, my family was in another room. A painting flew across the room and landed in the middle of it. After moving out, I brought it up with my mum that I also used to see dark figures dart around the corners. She gasped and mentioned to me that my dad had told her that he had seen dark figures too. This happened to me about four months back. My family decided to visit some relatives in the city. During our stay there, my brother and I played card games and stayed up late watching movies with our cousins. One night we went to grab some snacks, so me and two other cousins went to the kitchen while the rest stayed in the living room. While there, we heard a scream I heard the scream of another cousin who went to sleep early, but my two other cousins heard the scream of a different cousin who also went to sleep early. There are eight cousins in the house, including my brother and I, and we immediately went to the living room to see the problem. But my brother, who stayed in the living room, didn't hear anything. Even two of our other cousins who stayed outside didn't hear a thing. For the rest of the night, we talked about ghost stories, and it turns out the house was actually haunted. In one of the rooms, if you sleep alone, you will wake up at 3 a.m. and won't be able to sleep till 4. The kitchen and balcony are allegedly the two ghost hotspots in this house. I was at my girlfriend's parents' place with her. They live in a small town in Iceland, in the old doctor's house. It was the middle of the night and I had to get up to pee and I had this really uncomfortable slash bad feeling when from the corner of my eye I noticed a woman stare at me wearing an old timey dress. I turned to look in her direction and there's nothing there, not even an old oil lamp or something. It sent chills down my spine so I hurried back to our bedroom and asked my girlfriend, do you guys have any ghosts? Oh yeah, my brother refuses to sleep in this room because one night he couldn't move and when he opened his eyes, he saw a face. Was it a woman's face? Yeah, I think so, she replied. Apparently this woman died under the care of the good doctor and I was not the first nor fourth to see it. She's apparently harmless, but goddamn, it freaked me out. And my girlfriend was just sitting there acting like she's the Pope's pajamas. I also think it's important to note 
that a number of other people had experiences in the house, including an old psychic slash seer who refused to even pass the threshold into the house. When I was 15, my dad was driving to a friend's house to practice some roller hockey. My buddy lived in a two-story log cabin with a long, winding driveway. It was the first time I had been to his house and I had been told by his parents that he wouldn't be home until later in the evening. As we drove up, my dad said he thought my friend's parents weren't home, so I told him they weren't. He then points to a second story window and says, well, someone's here. I look up and see an older male dressed in Western clothing wearing a big cowboy hat. This is Texas, so it's not that unusual. I say I guess they got home early and shrugged it all off. A while later, I mentioned something about asking his parents something, and he says they won't be home till later. I point out both my dad and I saw someone in his house, and he freaks out because no one was supposed to be there. When we go into his house to check, we don't find anyone. After his parents got home, we were in a back room of the house, and I see a picture of the guy who had been upstairs. I point to it, and my buddy turns white, and says that was his granddad who died six years earlier. Turns out, my buddy's parents believed their house to be haunted by multiple spirits. One of the popular means of transportation in my city is the subway, but the stations are quite old, so many of them don't have escalators or elevators. Because of this, often enough, I help old people with their groceries or parents with their strollers climbing up and down the stairs. One of these times I was helping an old lady carry her stroller down the train platform and there was this clerk cleaning the platform with one of those big sweeper things that you push around. You know, they're slow and heavy. He was short and about 60, with hair missing from the top of his head, wearing big glasses. After I helped the lady, I leaned against the wall and started scrolling through my phone. The man reaches my position on the platform and from where he was, he said, Thank you for helping that woman. I raised my head from my phone and we both smile. Then he says, you're an angel. And I smile back, not really knowing what to say. Kind of embarrassed, I looked back at my phone and immediately get the idea to thank him and tell him that what he did made me feel good. However, when I looked up, moments later there was no one to be found, nor the machine he was operating. The doors where the subway clerks store their equipment at the end of the platform and we were nowhere close to them, as we were in the middle. I had no idea where he could have gone. No more than three to four seconds had passed between our exchange and me looking up. I never told anyone this story because it's kind of self-centered and hard to believe. People can dismiss it and say that I just wasn't paying enough attention, but there was legitimately nowhere for him to go without making a sound like that. When I was about 12 during a summer, my sister, who's five years older than me, was out with friends at work. We shared a bedroom. I was up late doodling in a notebook in bed and had an older glass TV next to my bed that was turned off. At one point I looked up and saw in the reflection of the TV screen my sister walk out of the bedroom doorway and into the stairwell. When I turned to greet her, she wasn't there. I get up and walked into the stairwell and all of the lights are still off downstairs and in the bathroom next to our bedroom. So I think she must have ran downstairs really fast and head down myself to find no one. At this point, I'm getting a little spooked and wanted to prove myself wrong, so I went outside and her car was still gone. I sprint back inside and run back upstairs to my parents' room and wake my mom to tell her I was pretty sure I had just seen a ghost. She was too tired to do much for it, so I went back to my bedroom petrified when I thought back on it, I realized the girl I saw was wearing a long sleeved dress that looked somewhat vintage. And my sister was very much a tomboy in those days, but she had blonde hair like my sister and was looking towards me while walking out of the room. I stayed awake with my light on until my actual sister got home and I felt safe to fall asleep. It still creeps me out, but I do think about it from time to time. I don't really believe much in an afterlife, but I know I saw a young girl walking out the door. I wasn't tired. I hadn't been watching anything earlier in the evening to scare me, 
and even further wasn't scared when I first saw her because I thought it was just my sister. I can't explain it though, and I never saw her or anything like it again. I was visiting a friend in Chicago, and she told me under no uncertain terms the ghost of a woman who lived there wasn't really fond of men staying there. I was told that I needed to make sure I closed the door behind me, lest she slam the door behind me. Sure as hell, the first night I'm there, I get up to pee in the middle of the night. I didn't close the bathroom door when I came back from the bathroom, and the door slammed so hard it knocked a piece of art off the damn wall. This occurred when I was around two years old. I personally have no memories of the experience, and this is mostly based on what others have told me. I was staying with my paternal grandparents, and I described to my grandmother about how an old lady with a dog sat down and read to me in her backyard. She asked what the name of the dog was, and I told her that the name was Bo. My grandmother called my mum and told her what I had said, and my mum told her that my maternal grandmother, who passed away a few years before I was born, had a dog named Bo for a while. There was absolutely no way I could have known that prior to telling my grandma, so I 100% believe that the ghost of my maternal grandmother decided to pay me a visit that day. This story happened to me at the time when my best friend and I were volunteering to clean up a cemetery after a big storm my senior year. We were walking along, talking, picking up branches and stuff from the storm, tidying up stuff left on graves, just making an afternoon of it. And suddenly, at the exact same time, we both froze and turned to look at the same spot behind us. After asking each other what we heard, we confirmed that we both heard a woman's voice go, shh, right behind us. It wasn't like the wind in the trees. It was almost like the sound a librarian would make when you're talking five decibels too loud. And we both looked at the exact same spot from where it came from. There was no one there. The closest person to us was a good 50 feet away, and they'd have to yell just for us to hear them. Curious, my friend took a look at the headstone right there, and then looked at the one next to that. It was a mother, buried with her infant. We were disturbing the baby. We even apologized for being too noisy after that, and went on our way not wanting to offend the spirits. Last summer, I was helping my boyfriend clean up his house a bit, at least two or three times. I swear, I felt him stand right next to me, but he seemed to be across the room. I brushed it off. Then he was running some garbage outside to his dumpster. As I was sweeping, I took a step backwards and felt something brush against my back. So I said, Oh, sorry. I didn't hear you come back, as I turned around thinking I'd bumped into him. And then my boyfriend walked in through the front door in the other room. After that, he told me that his whole family had had stuff like that happen all the time, and they're pretty sure their house, which is a massive three-story place, which is over a hundred years old, has at least three different spiritual inhabitants. And he assumes that one got curious. Close to a year ago, a friend and I went to a local cemetery. We hadn't been there in 12 years, and nothing paranormal had ever happened. Well, this time something did. My friend and I decided to go ghost hunting and exploring in a cemetery in a town that I used to live in. We were bored and thought we'd go after midnight, because they say it's the witching hour. We went into the cemetery and fell very heavily in there but the moon was out and gave illumination since we didn't have flashlights. We started walking on the path, attempting to stay away from the graves as we wanted to be respectful of the dead. It started feeling weird at times, like being watched, also seeing shadows moving and getting feelings of goosebumps. My friend said he saw what looked like a winged, shadowy thing descend into the sky, and we kept hearing the crunching of leaves and unintelligible talking or whispering. We tried walking into one area but got this weird feeling of dread or something lurking that wanted to be ambushed. So we noped out of there and went into a different path in the cemetery. 
But then the mood vanished behind the clouds, and it got darker. We'd been there for maybe 45 minutes, and then this feeling of dread crept up on us, and we slowly made our way towards the exit. Mind you, my friend was walking much faster than me, and was slightly ahead, and I was maybe halfway near the exit when I felt something hit me on the left, near the back of the ear. It felt like a round object. When it happened, I yelled at my friend. I explained that as a kid, I hated when some kid in class would hit me in the back of the head with objects and it used to really get on my nerves. At first, I thought he threw something at me, to be funny, even though why he would do it wasn't exactly very justifiable. He said he hadn't, plus he was ahead of me so it wouldn't have been possible. We ran out into the car and drove somewhere where we could discuss what happened and what we saw in the cemetery. To this day, we're not entirely sure what occurred. We've tried to debunk it, but cannot find any rational logic for what happened to me. For like a month, I felt like a totally different person and didn't have any paranormal things happen to me at all. This happened back in middle school. I received violin lessons from one of my teacher's old students. My teacher always told us to be careful and very respectful in the practice room. It was a soundproof room that we had in the band building because that was the most haunted room. My teacher said that you didn't want to anger anything or anyone in there. While I was waiting for my violin teacher to come into the practice room, I set up a chair for me and a chair for my violin teacher and placed it side by side. I ended up practicing for a few minutes by myself and that's when it happened. As I was playing music, the chair next to me looked as if it was being grabbed by someone and it spun around and faced me. The chair even slid back a bit as if someone had sat on it. Not gonna lie, I freaked out and was screaming internally but decided to keep on playing because whatever it was wanted to watch me play. As I continued to play, my violin teacher walked in, saw my freaked out face and saw the chair facing me. He kind of smiled and said, oh, so it happened to you too, huh? He just shrugged it off, grabbed a different chair and sat next to me, and we proceeded with the lesson, with the chair still facing me. I have never been so freaked out in all my life. My Chow Chow passed away in December 1999. She was almost 14 years old. One evening in the late spring of 2000, I got an unusual urge to go out onto the front porch. The porch and front of the house were brightly lit by a streetlight across the street. While standing outside, I hear a chuff, chuff, chuff noise coming from the left and getting closer. This sounded exactly like the sound my chow chow would make when doing a fast walk. The sound continued approaching from the left. By now, I'm looking up and down the street, in yards and over railings, trying to ascertain where the noise was coming from. There was no one in the street, no one in my yard, and no one else outside. I looked and looked, but couldn't find a source, and the noise kept coming. When the sound was right in front of me, it stopped, as I felt the sudden presence of my chow chow. I broke into happy tears and enjoyed her presence and thought how much I loved her and missed her. I thought how it would be to have her back with me all the time. Something inside me told me that having a ghost, albeit a dog ghost with me all the time, may not be the best thing. So I told her I loved her but that she needed to go on with her journey and that we would be together again. The chuff 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 noise started again, moving to the right, away from the porch and continued for a short while, getting continually fainter. I never heard the noise again but I do believe we will be reunited one day. In my current home, the common one thing we would hear is random footsteps and the sound of our upstairs hall switches flicking on and off. But the lights wouldn't turn on or off, only the sound of switches, which are unmistakable. The one that scared the living hell out of me was hearing someone upstairs banging on my door desperately at 3 a.m. I used to think my parents were the ones making the switch noises and the footsteps. My parents assumed it was either me or my sister rushing to turn off the lights to act asleep when we heard them coming upstairs. So my dad did some sneaking around when he was positive he could hear a switch sound. 
he came into our rooms and noticed we were snoring. I did my fair share of investigation too, and found out it wasn't by any of us. Now I wanted the door banging situation. It was a Friday night, and I was super tired. I slept at probably 9 or 10 p.m. and woke up briefly at 3 a.m. to check on my phone. Then I heard it. A loud, bang-like thing on my door for about three seconds. I felt the vibration on my bed. I tried to make sense of it. My dad has a habit of banging doors when we lock them, but I flashed my phone light at it and it was unlocked. Plus, my dad would yell our names, and I didn't hear anything. I was twenty and scared to death, and hid under my blanket and slept after some time. At lunch, I asked if anyone did that slash heard anything, to which everyone denied. It's definitely not wind, since we closed our windows, and it wasn't a windy day to begin with. Plus, I experienced what wind can do, and this was different. Other than that, it's just the sound switch, and maybe the laundry basket moving a few times, but nothing physical happened, and I'm not particularly bothered by it. My grandmother passed away from cancer two years before I was born, and my grandfather had a room where he kept all her things, such as jewellery, pictures, her china and crystal collections, etc. I moved abroad at quite a young age, but would stay with my grandfather when he visited, and my brother and I would often be given her room to sleep in during our visit. It's hard to explain really, but I always felt there was something lightly off in that room. I didn't mind sleeping there, but I also didn't hang out in the room much during the day, even when I was much younger. Before we moved abroad, the room wasn't one I would play in. I always played in the room directly next to it. Fast forward to when I was 10 years old and visiting my grandpa, staying in the room as normal. The room was super dark at night, and my grandpa had these super blackout blinds to let no light in. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I could see this floating figure at the end of my bed. What I saw I can only describe as this very white glowing thing. As I said, there was no light in this room at night, but this thing was bright white. It looked like it was draped in this white see-through stuff, which floated as if in the wind blowing inside the room. It stood there for a moment. It wasn't terrifying at all. The thing is, it was almost calming for a ten-year-old to see something like that, but it did freak me out and I hid under the covers until I passed out from exhaustion. I still think about it from time to time. Like I said, I don't know what I saw. I like to think it was my grandmother since it was her room, but who knows? I've never really been able to rationalize what I saw, but I haven't slept or spent more than five minutes in that room since, and it has been 17 years. My friend has insisted that his parents' house was haunted for years while we were growing up. His sister told stories about a ghost that would turn her TV on at nighttime or do something like shake her bed while she was in it, but I never really believed them. One day they asked me if I would house sit for them while they were all on vacation. It's where my drum kit lived at the time, so I was always there anyway, as my friend and I were in a band together, so I didn't think anything of it and said yes, and that was when my first and only paranormal experience happened. I'll never forget it. I had slept in on a sunny day. It was around 11 in the morning, and I had nowhere to go. I was laying awake in bed in the spare bedroom upstairs, knowing full well that I was alone in there, when all of a sudden the sound of an adult man singing opera filled the entire house for about 30 seconds. It was extremely loud and unignorable, and I will never forget how scared I was and after the singing stopped, my heart was absolutely beating out of my chest. I got dressed and sprinted out of the house as fast as I could and didn't go back to finish my house sitting duties after that. I figured the ghost had it handled. My bedroom is on the second story. The stairs are to the right of my bedroom and bathroom door. It started out like a normal dream. At the time, I thought the whole ordeal was real. I came downstairs when I heard my mum come home from work. She set a cute looking porcelain doll with wavy brown hair and a frilly white dress on the counter, and said she went by the thrift store to pick it up. Oh sweet, I say, and I inspected it. Mum walked down the hallway to her room, 
and I carried the doll back upstairs with me. I set the doll on my nightstand, and as I'm just getting laid down under the covers, I hear my mum screaming, No! Don't take it upstairs! Then there's banging on the walls. At that moment, I'm rigid, staring at the ceiling. Nausea sets in. Blackness. And a woman with black eyes and rotting flesh appears above me. Hands gripping and pushing my shoulders down. And I can taste salt and blood. Her open, screaming mouth is dripping, cold splashes on my face. My ears are assaulted with the worst scream I've ever heard. Just blood-curdling sobs. It was so anguished. I just can't move, staring up at this woman who's still just grasping at my neck. I soon realize it's a dream, and honest to God, all I can think about is, I can't believe my brain is doing this. Her image becomes hazy, and I start to come to. It's only about 5 a.m. when I wake up, I expect it to be 3 a.m. I'm surprised it didn't terrify me as much as it should have. I'm just a really jumpy person. So a couple of minutes after reviewing this, and I get sick. I've seen this woman before. I certainly believe in the paranormal, but I'm not horrified by ghosts. My experience has taught me that whatever you're dealing with is dead and gone, and simply doesn't have the willpower to hurt you. In the aforementioned hallway downstairs, there's a bathroom on the right. There's a curtain that blocks the rest of the continuing hallway. I must have been about 13 to 14, but I was really into the paranormal. The hallway and bathroom lights were off, and the atmosphere felt right enough to do a little Bloody Mary game. My parents were right outside on the porch, so I felt ballsy enough to try it. I leaned into the bathroom and said the chant and ran out of the bathroom, past the curtain and into the continuing hallway. Now, I can't explain this, but I've mentally checked it over and over. The curtain seemed to lift away from the ground, and a woman with long greasy hair, empty eye sockets and a lipless grin slowly leaned out the bathroom door. And I kid you not, I kicked her, but heard nothing. I can't describe how the thing vanished, and I booked it past the hallway outside my parents' room. I was getting chills, and I never told anyone about what I saw. I just didn't want to think about it this time. I've since been baptized, and I'm hoping that no more spooky ghosts will choose to attach themselves to me. My mother opened a clothing store, and the building she and her partner rented was, at one time, a popular brothel. It's a beautiful building, but very haunted. One night, she had closed up for the night, locked the doors, set the alarm, and went home in the evening. Then around 3 or 4 a.m., the police department called her, and told her someone was in her store, and had turned all the lights on, and it looked like end caps and things were turned over, and items were all over the floor. The police told her that they didn't suspect anyone was in the building, and the doors were still locked. They also said, by the looks of things, it was extremely unnerving, and that it would be better if she went to check on things. So she did. When she got to the store, she went into the basement, where handbags and merchandise were kept in storage. She said the door, which was locked by deadbolt, was wide open. The handbags were thrown around, and clothes were scattered all over the place. Fast forward a few months. Both my parents decided to open up a restaurant, and things get weirder. No one who owned the building prior ever mentioned any paranormal activity. But after working in the kitchen for almost three years, I've got a few stories that are unexplainable. On a busy Friday night in the summer last year, a stack of pizza trays flew off a rack and almost hit me in the face. I've had water pitchers thrown at me by this ghost as well, and I think that same week the fridge door opened up and a box of pork flew out maybe four or five feet onto the ground. My head chef saw this and we freaked out together. More recently, this ghost has become a fan of turning on mixing bowls and moving plates around. It hasn't thrown anything at me recently, but the one time it threw a pitcher at me, it did hit my hand. My head chef said he'd seen the ghost, and it's a woman wearing a red dress and looked like she's from the early 1900s. Sometimes at night, we will hear someone walking around after everything and everyone has left the building. At this point, it's not really scary, just a regular thing. It doesn't like women though, and it's actually pushed my general manager up against a window and held her face against it. She no longer goes into the kitchen at night. 
We believe this ghost is connected to the clothing store ghost and that my mother carries her spirit around. It's very odd and sometimes scary because the ghost isn't always peaceful. Sometimes new hires get excited and agitated, in which case I get very serious and tell them to knock that out and that it's not funny. When I was 10, I was in bed with my back to the door and suddenly felt something standing in my bedroom staring at my back. I'd never felt scared in that room before, but in that moment there was no doubt something was in there with me. I was frozen in sheer terror and couldn't move. Dead silence. Just me and whatever it was, and after a few minutes I screamed bloody murder for my dad, who came running into the room. As soon as he opened the door, he asked me, what was that? Every once in a while, one of us would bring it up. It never happened after that. This one is a little banal, but it is just as real. A few years ago, I moved into a four bedroom home. One of the bedrooms always had a vibe to it, nothing bad, just definitely a sad place. The rest of the house was fine, but me and one of the kids stayed out of that room whenever possible. When she was about eight, out of the blue, she asked me who died in the room. I told her it felt like a dog, and she said, I was thinking that, somebody loved him. I also want to add that my dad had the house blessed by a priest around then. I can't recall if he did it before or after, but the point is, the blessing didn't take. My mother was involved in union affairs, so I often had to accompany her on business trips. One time, we stayed in an old tuberculosis hospital that had been converted into cheap motel slash hotel suites, and as I learned, was awash in horrifying ghost stories. Let me paint the picture. This hotel spittal was extremely conservative in its interior design. Everything seemed to be utilitarian, from the rooms having exactly two beds, a table, chair, and a desk, and nothing else, to the bleachable plastic lino coverings on the floor, to the exposed white pipes that came through the ceiling that still had its original plaster crown molding. Along both sides of the very wide hall that composed the main building were rooms besides each other that were clearly once patient rooms. But running down the very center of this hall were its own rooms with windowed walls and doors leading onto this little courtyard, usually with some couches and a TV and other stuff like that. The doors could be slid open so you could easily pass through them to the other side. You could see through the large window walls to the other rooms lining the other side of the hall. So this center boulevard of lounge areas barely felt like a room at all. The various tales surrounding this infamous long building of rooms were so. The flute playing girl. A girl with long hair would be seen in windows on the top of roofs and in mirrors, or too far away for people to properly make out. She would play a flute in a strange, disjointed manner. Throughout the night, I realized the pipes would often make a whistling noise as water rushed through them above our heads, and wondered if that was the origin of the tale. Then there's the story of the suicide nurse, a woman who worked at the hospital and couldn't handle seeing so many deaths and hung herself. Apparently no one had any idea that she had been so badly traumatized and didn't see it coming, so it was a shock. People reported leaving at night for some reason, the bathroom, getting a snack, etc., and returning to see their beds made up. One woman I spoke to had this happen literally every night and had assumed that it was some sort of janitor or hospitality worker that just popped in to do it quickly at 3am for some reason, and didn't think of it after that. There were no overnight staff that would do that though. Then there was the story of the yelling group. People reported hearing loud, heated sounding arguments between several men coming from down the hall. Too far to make out the words, but definitely obvious angry and violent sounding. People would call the front desk about and get Oh yeah, that's just... Ignore that, it's no one. Because they'd grown so used to getting the reports of the fighting noises, and the odd things would be that one room would hear it, but no other rooms on that floor ever would. And the most famous one is the... Where are you? Ghost. The hospital used to be located near a river that was frequently used by First Nation communities before it was settled by immigrants. A man was returning home by canoe, 
and he heard someone screaming in fear begging for help. He began shouting, where are you? Who's calling? Trying to find them and help them. But it just ended slowly in screams until it was gone. Unnerved, he hurried back to his village, only to find it entirely raised to the ground. Those who were standing on the banks of the river will hear the sound of the people crying or begging for help, maybe even their name. And it has the name Cou Appel River. For those who don't speak French, it translates as the river of who is calling. One night, my grandmother was driving and she came up upon an intersection. She had the right of way, so was just gonna keep driving, but suddenly a bright white figure darted in front of her, causing her to slam on the brakes. She was shocked and took a moment to look around for whatever did that, but nothing was there. Not a moment later, an 18 wheeler came barreling through the intersection. If whatever figure did not dart in front of my grandmother's car, she would have likely been killed instantly by this 18 wheeler. My own story is on the scarier side of the paranormal. I was about 10 years old and had just moved into a new room in the house. I was super happy to have a bigger room, but I had always avoided sleeping in it when it was a playroom for some reason. The first night I found out why. As I lay in bed that first night unable to sleep, I began to see some sort of figure standing in the corner of the room right near the light switch. It was a very vague humanoid shape, but that's all I could make out. I stared at it all night until I was finally exhausted enough to fall asleep. Over time, I kept seeing the figure standing in the same spot unmoving. As time would go on, the figure became more defined. After about three years of seeing this figure almost nightly in my room, I was able to see it clearly. She had a very feminine figure, but was very tall. She had shoulder length hair that was straight and fell over her face and abnormally long arms that reached down to her knees. Her fingers were long and sharp, almost as if they were blades, and reached down to the floor. She had no color to her, just a mass of pure darkness. Most nights she would be staring into the corner, and these nights I felt fine. I felt no bad emotions coming from her at all. Some nights she would be looking at me, but I couldn't see her eyes. These nights I would feel uneasy and struggle to sleep, but nothing scary ever really happened. When I was about 16, was when things got scary and borderline violent. One night when she was facing me, I caught a glimpse of her eyes. I froze up completely. Her eyes were piercing and pure blood red. What I felt that night was pure hatred and malice towards me. This was the first time since she started appearing where I couldn't sleep until I passed out from exhaustion. She didn't move at me at all, thankfully. After that night, things changed. The shelf in her corner would always have things moved around. Sometimes she would wake me up by throwing things from the shelf on the ground. Eventually she even tried throwing things directly at me, but she never left her corner. One night when I was 17, I saw her move for the first time. It was one of the bad nights where she would throw things at me, and I woke up to a book hitting the wall dangerously close to me. I immediately looked up to where she would be standing and saw her slowly but surely lifting her spindly arm to point at me with her blade-like finger. The emotions I felt in that moment were all over the place, fear, anger, sadness, malice, and all sorts of negativity. It overwhelmed me to the point of passing out. When I woke up after that, it was dark and the negativity was just as intense. That's when I noticed she had moved from the corner entirely. She was standing above me by the side of my bed. I even tried to scream and run away to punch her, but I couldn't move. All I could do was cry. I don't remember how I got out of the situation. The next week I slept on the couch in the living room. I tried to go back to sleep in my room after a week, but she was still there. She never got that intense again after that night. Eventually, I went to college, but when I came back for home breaks, she was no longer there. And I haven't seen her since I turned 18. Let's keep it that way. This happened when I was little, the summer before first grade. A few months after moving into our new house, I would complain to my parents daily about a scratching noise coming from the closet. Every night I'd hear it, and every day I would tell my parents. My mum slept with me one night and heard the scratching too. She told me years later, 
that the night she spent in my room with me, she felt something grab at her leg, almost as if it was trying to pull her off the bed. I remember the night after she slept in my room, we had a living room slumber party. My mum attempted at keeping me out of the room, so we all slept in the living room for a few days. I started to hear the scratching in the bathroom as I was brushing my teeth a few days later, and I called out to my mum that I was hearing the scratching again. She came into the room to comfort me, and we all left. We both noticed a cut on each of our feet, in the exact same position, that had not been there the day before. We stayed with our grandma after that day, and moved into a new house after that, and never went back to that house. I was so young at the time I didn't really understand what was happening, but now I get it. If my mum hadn't have stayed with me in the room that night, who knows how long we would have lived there. I still live in the neighbourhood, but me and my cousin used to live in a place that's known for being haunted. The house was featured on many different ghost hunting shows. Me and my cousin, who we will call Kyle, both had encounters with ghosts there. The ghost was always a man dressed in all black. Black fedora, suit, pants, black shoes, black suitcase. Kyle was with his parents at the time when he saw him. He was sitting on a cardboard box at the end of the second story hallway. Note that you had to walk this way to get to where he was living. While he was walking with his parents down the hall, he asked them, Who's that man? Pointing at him. His parents were confused as they couldn't see who he was pointing to. They had asked him, What are you talking about? Kyle kept pointing to the man. His parents just shrugged it off and said, Honey, no one's there. My encounter with him was a bit different. We had these washer dryers that were next to the stairs. Now, if someone was standing there, you could only really see half of their body. I was by myself at the time, but I was going down the stairs, and I could see a man standing at the washers. I could only recall seeing him from the corner of my eye, but once I blinked, he was gone. I was really confused because I swore I saw someone there. A few years later, I heard that Kyle saw the same man, told his parents about my encounter, and that's when I learned that the town had to burn many dead bodies because of a plague that had rolled into town many years ago, and many of the houses, including mine, were used for burning bodies. My town is a little bit messed up. Years ago when I was a kid, my next door neighbor Lila, a sweet old lady who loved doing crosswalks for kids going to school, came over one morning and asked my mum if everything was okay and if she wanted to talk. My mum was confused and asked why she would randomly assume something was wrong. Apparently, Leela had been looking out of her back window pretty late into the night and saw my mum leaning on the fence in an old-looking white dress just staring into the darkness of the woods behind our house for a good while. Only my mum didn't own any white dresses and she wasn't outside the night before. It still creeps me out to this day. When I was 13... I was at a church youth group sleepover that was held at our youth group's leader's house. We were going on a ski trip the next morning, but I wasn't feeling well after dinner, so I decided to go to sleep early upstairs while everyone else was watching Big Mama's house downstairs. I was in a sleeping bag on the floor of one of the empty upstairs bedrooms, but it was hard for me to fall asleep because my throat was really bothering me. There was no one upstairs besides me and a baby sleeping on his own. At one point, the baby started crying. The mum slash youth group leader's wife came upstairs to check on him. He stopped crying and then she went back downstairs. I remember hearing all of that happening and also hearing laughter and sounds from the movie downstairs as well. After the youth group leader's wife went back downstairs, I was still having trouble falling asleep. I was looking around the dark, empty room when all of a sudden I see movement from the corner of my right eye like something was moving towards me very slowly. I look to my right and see a headless figure in dark Victorian style dress floating towards me in the dark. I remember this figure had no head and the dress had a white collar with some sort of brooch in the middle. It had long sleeves and it was puffy from the waist down. I can still see it in my mind almost 20 years later. I was completely frozen in fear as it slowly floated towards me and I finally got the courage to pull the sleeping bag over my head. 
I used to be really religious, so I just kept saying the Lord's Prayer over and over. I was like suffocating inside the sleeping bag and didn't have the courage to run downstairs. Eventually I was so tired I fell asleep with the sleeping bag still over my head, and I woke up the next morning still scared from what happened, but I never told anyone at church about this or asked the youth group leader about his house. I still can't look at dark coloured Victorian style dresses without remembering this traumatic experience. I worked in a 90 year old bookstore. Two months into working there, the long time owners had decided to retire, but soon after, the assistant manager chose to keep the place open despite the long time owners having sold off 90% of the stock. The assistant manager hired family and friends and kept half of the old staff, including me. A few months in, one of the friends she hired, who ran our computers after we closed at 9 p.m., said a man would appear on the basement stairs at 10 p.m., would walk to the back of the store, climb the stairs into the loft and disappear. The assistant manager took this story with a grain of salt, as she was religious and did not believe in the paranormal. But then family she hired started staying late too, and they began seeing the guy as well. Eventually, the assistant manager stayed there late and claimed to see him as well. Six months into the assistant manager running the place, a lady showed up with pictures of the store from the 50s, saying she had worked there in the 60s. I asked her if she'd ever seen the ghost. I worked for him, she told us. She explained that the ghost was the owner within the 60s. In his time, the store closed at 10, and he would go around looking for last minute customers before heading up to the office. Meanwhile, I always had the morning shift, and I'd start coming in before sunrise, because we had someone stealing all our newspapers from the front porch. I would go inside and wait in the nearby dark for the newspaper truck to drop them off. It was a few days after hearing the story about the old manager. I'd just brought the papers in, and was hankering for donuts from a nearby shop. As I was about to leave, I turned back towards the darkness and said, Go to the donut shop, want anything? I didn't hear a voice, but the words, bear claw, popped into my head. I ran for the door, getting the creepy feeling that if I stuck around for one more second, I really would hear a voice say, bear claw. When I was in high school, I worked at a spiritual retreat center that was also a convent. It was an old historical building that everyone said was haunted. I had the following experiences there. One. I was doing dishes with a co-worker, and we got to talking about the place being haunted. At one point I said, how would we even know if this place is haunted? At that moment, the heavy wooden door that was always open slammed shut behind me. I looked around and there weren't any windows open. The maintenance guys that would sometimes around there weren't, and somehow the door stop that kept the door open was several feet away. Two, there were several times when I would be running the dishwasher and a co-worker would leave the room slash floor to get dishes from the other rooms. I would see them back out of the corner of my eye and call to them, then no one would be there. Three, on Sunday nights we worked alone. My first Sunday working alone, I was bringing the kitchen laundry to the laundry room, which always made me feel uneasy when I walked by, and I started hearing a knocking sound. As I walked into the laundry room, the knocking got more frequent. It was loud as well. It just kept going, so I thought there was a machine on or something leaking, or maybe a branch banging on the outside door to the room. So I checked everything out, then opened the back door, and that's when it stopped. There weren't any branches, and the door opened into this area that was closed off, so it's not like someone could have been knocking. I was so scared that I didn't work Sunday nights anymore after that. My sister and I were sharing a room, she is about a year and a half younger than me. We would watch TV from our bunk beds every night. I had the top, she the bottom. My sister would also steal the remote and put on YouTube. And as some may know, YouTube stops playing after a while of inactivity. Well, one night I woke up to a voice saying, help me, very quietly. It was close to me, but I could tell that it was saying it to my sister below me. I always had a blanket over my head and have a little hole to breathe, so I opened my eyes under the blanket and listened. It said these words twice before it came up to my ear and whispered the same thing. I curled into the fetal position and tried to calm myself, but it got worse. 
For some reason that I still don't know to this day, I uncovered my head. Big mistake. The end of my bed was against the wall, which is important. Something was sitting there with long black hair, nothing but a grey face and a long white dress. I ducked my head back under the covers and cried. I tried to call out to my mum, but my voice wouldn't make a noise. I later cried myself to sleep. What's worse than that? I thought it was a nightmare. I told my mum in the morning what happened and drew a picture of her. A few years after, the topic popped up again. Somehow, something my mum never told me was that the same night she actually did hear her call out for her. When she checked, I was already asleep. I'll never forget that night. It was horrible. At the old house we used to live in, we believed there was a little ghost boy who lived there as well. My family had seen him a few times in the backyard wearing blue mesh shorts, an orange shirt, and the sneaker sandal things with black and green outlines. He would sometimes run around and play, but there was one time that he really scared my mum. She was home alone when my siblings and I were at school and my dad was at work. It was around one, so she had about an hour left before she had to pick me and my sister up from school. She finished making the food in the kitchen and made sure to turn off and unplug everything she used. She went to her room to take a shower and out of nowhere the blender turned on by itself. As you can imagine, she got super scared and went back to the kitchen to turn it off. She scolded the little boy and told him that he was welcome in the house but he couldn't be scaring her like that. Luckily, that was the first and only incident that he ever pulled. I was at a secondary school camp. Basically, the sleeping area for guys is a fenced-in area that also served as the activity area. There's only one way in and out of the place, and there's a big street light slash lamp shining down on that spot, so it's super obvious at night. What happened was I woke up needing to pee. As I walked to the porta potties, I saw an old man walking out of the sleeping area. It was late, and no one else was awake, but I saw it clearly. The old man shuffling his feet and walking out, and the lamp shone directly on him, making him super obvious. I don't think much of it, and just went to the toilet. I had forgotten about it for two years, when my friend, who used to be a camp counsellor, told us there was a stone in the activity area that served as a tombstone for an old man that died there. I knew he wasn't lying about the stone because I remember standing on it, and then suddenly it clicked, and it made me realise I might have actually seen the old man, because there was no reason for an old man to be entering the guy's sleeping area in the first place, let alone exit it. There were actual toilets on the other side, not porta potties. I'm just glad I didn't follow the old man that night. When I was around seven, I woke up in the middle of the night because I thought I heard a loud noise in the house. I walked out of my room and glanced down the long hallway where I could see the street light shining through my window onto the kitchen floor. I rubbed my eyes and I saw what appeared to be my younger brother standing just beyond the beam of light in the shadow. I walked towards him to see what was going on and as I grew closer, it became more and more clear that this small boy was not my brother at all. It was super still, with its head tilted and was just staring at me with these piercing dark eyes that I'll never forget. I ran straight into my parents' room as fast as I could and slept on their bed that night. I never brought it up with them, and I did my best to try and forget about it. I think I almost convinced myself that I made it up in my head. Fast forward several years later, and I'm a senior in high school, hanging with my then girlfriend, my brother, and a few of his friends at our house. It was dark and storming outside, and our power had gone out. I decided to light a candle, put it in the middle of us, and we were all just laying there, talking out on the floor. Someone randomly suggested that we tell ghost stories, and immediately I thought of my encounter ten years prior. I said, Guys, I'm going to tell you something that I've never told a single soul. I saw something many years ago right here in this very house, and I don't care if you believe me or not, I 100% saw something right over there, pointing over to the kitchen. Before I could even start my story, my brother goes, wait, are you serious? 
I glanced over at him confused as to why he interrupted me. He then looked me dead in the eyes, his face distressed and turning a little white. D did you happen to see a little boy? My jaw dropped. I was at a complete loss for words. Everyone around us immediately started freaking out too, because they instantly grasped that we had both seen the same thing, and I still get goosebumps just thinking about it. I bought a B&B &B built in 1850, and after we had moved in, people began to tell us it was haunted. Seems the home used to belong to a local doctor, and it was not only his home, but the local hospital too. From the second night there, we started to have strange things happen. My eldest daughter has health issues, and she said someone was sitting on the edge of her bed at night. On the third night, she was brave enough to look to see who it was. A dark-haired man was sitting there, with his head in his hands. Seems our doctor was still doing rounds and was checking up on her. A few nights later, we heard heavy footsteps coming down the hall. I hid in a room and jumped as the sound was right outside the door. And while the sound continued down the hall, there was no one there. My husband left for a few months for work, and we wouldn't tell him the stories of our doctor's visits, and he was polite, but you could tell he really didn't believe us. When he returned for a visit, he was asking about the doc, and if he had really been active recently. We were walking through the halls at the time, and when we reached for a doorknob, the door slammed shut. His hand just froze mid-air, and after a few moments it swung back open until the door handle was in his palm. All the time. I let him know with a smile. The doc also loved to change the radio station and change the clocks, which was a bit of a pain, but it was his house too. One night he set off the smoke detectors in my daughter's bedroom. I went in and took it down. The alarm was still screaming in my hand and we removed the batteries and it kept on ringing. That event was like a blur, very surreal, and I had to beat the smoke detector to a thousand pieces before it got quiet. But the best one was to come about six months later. We had opened to the public and hosted a very small wedding with less than 30 people in the B&B. The reception was a success and people began to say their goodbyes while I began to clear up. I took a bunch of dishes back to the kitchen and quickly returned as none of the guests had left and I saw a man in the adjacent room admiring a print I had hanging over the fireplace mantel, one that looked incredibly similar to the B&B with a fantastic garden. I smiled at him and told him it was one of my favourite paintings and he returned the smile, going back to look at it. I should have known something was off. Firstly, he was wearing a very old-fashioned brown suit that was in style maybe a hundred years ago, but not today, right down to the pocket watch and chain and his shoes. I walked from the room past the front door into the reception, all of 15 feet. Then I turned to ask if he had enjoyed the wedding, and he was gone. The door was still locked. No footsteps were heard on the wooden floor. He had simply vanished. Our family believes in ghosts, and every time he made an appearance, we would just acknowledge his visit, thank him for caring for us, etc. I still think he was just lonely, and was so happy that the house was being used and cared for again. I worked in a care home, middle of the night shift. Room 24's buzzer goes off, which is weird because it was on the middle floor, and the home hadn't got enough residents at this point to fill that floor. The ground was nursing and the top was dementia, so I get sent upstairs to investigate, and I find the door locked and the alarm still ringing. So I phone the nurse on duty and she comes up with the key, unlocked the door, and we found the room to contain the belongings of a man who died several months before, and management was storing it until the family decided to do something with it, as they were from Australia. As I went to hit the alarm button to turn it off, the nurse said loudly, All right, Barry. We'll get you a pint, hold on. She opened a can of beer that we have for residents and left it open in the room. Didn't hear anything else from that room the rest of the time I worked there. This was back when I was still a churchgoer. My mum, little brother and I would sit close together. It was a small church with a big congregation, so we had to huddle up a bit. My brother was sitting between me and my mum and he was kind of squished up at the time. About halfway through the sermon, I felt a hand on my shoulder. 
Distinctly, a hand, a soft pressure on the back of my shoulder, and a slightly harder pressure curling into my collarbone. It was a really gentle feeling. It felt like any other time a person would put their hand on your shoulder to comfort you. So anyway, I turned to see who it was, and then when I looked, the feeling faded. Not lifted like the hand moved, the sensation just kind of melted away as if it had never been there to begin with. When I looked up, I saw my mum looking back at me. She looked kind of shocked. She had felt the same thing. We both looked down at my brother, whose arms physically couldn't have moved that far without us knowing. We acknowledged it in the car on the way home, but never really spoke about it again. My uncle, my mum's brother, died in a car accident when I was about 12, and I was about 14 to 15 at the time, and still recovering from the extended trauma of everything. 22 now, it still happens every now and again. I'll just feel the gentle pressure on my arm, or my back, and it freaks me out for a second. If any doctors are here, I'd love for you to tell me that I have some rare nerve disorder or something, but that's the closest I have to a ghost story. At a pub I used to work at, we'd always hear a load of thumping around in one corner upstairs. After a few weeks, we found a room that had been sealed over. After some research, it turned out the original landlord had hung himself in that room, but boot scuffs on the wall suggested he'd changed his mind halfway through, explaining all the flailing banging sounds that we'd been hearing. This happened a little while ago. I was just walking up the stairs in my house, when I heard a noise, then it became more clear. There was a little girl laughing in my parents' bedroom. I shrieked and almost fell backwards down the stairs, and I know it was a ghost, because no kids were playing outside, and my siblings were in the basement. Try and explain that away, please. I used to work at a casino to set up for big dinner events and exclusive parties. One night, it was just me and my supervisor working that night, and I head up to the second top floor, which is a pretty nice bar area of the casino slash hotel, and everyone thinks it's haunted for some reason. Naturally, I thought they were just full of crap. So I'm up there setting cocktail tables and stuff, and about halfway through, I hear my supervisor's voice come from the kitchen area from behind some doors, just making casual conversation. We were pretty good friends, so he was asking me about a girl I told him I'd met the night before. We were talking for maybe three minutes before he suddenly stops and doesn't answer. When I ask if something happens or if he's alright, after getting no replies, I start to walk from the front of the room next to an elevator to the floor and make my way to the kitchen to see if he's alright. Once I made it to the middle of the room, I hear the elevator. There isn't supposed to be anyone else in our department working right now, and we're the only ones allowed on the floor. When the elevator stops and the doors open, my supervisor walks out and apologizes for taking so long to come up and help. I'm shocked and confused. I don't really know what to say. After a minute or two of being confused as hell, he asks me if I'm alright, and then I tell him what happened. I'm a pretty big skeptic, but he's a fully fledged believer and I'm terrified. He rushes to finish setting up for the party and then instead of finishing the rest of the work we were supposed to that night, he tells me to go home and he left shortly after. We're still unsure what happened, or what to make of it. I was staying at this huge house to watch a family friend's dog while they were out of town. The woman's husband died a few years back from cancer, and all of his stuff was stored in the guest room closet when I was sleeping. One night I was completely asleep, and I woke up to the sound of something falling. I flicked on the light and realized a movie had fallen out of the TV stand. That wouldn't be that weird except the TV stand where the movies were stored had doors, and the doors had these latches that you'd have to pull decently hard to open. I decided to be brave and go figure out what happened, and when I picked the movie, I kid you not, it was Ghost. It was probably something between 12 to 3 a.m., but I got out of the house as fast as I could. Also, the dog wasn't in the room with me, as the door was closed and locked. I've had a few spooky ghost stories happen to me, but my two favourites are these. One happened, and one started at the same night. 
When I was a teenager in Riverside, California, my older brother and his friends used to visit the local cemeteries at night to be spooky goth kids, often picking up broken stones and messes made by jerks along the way. This particular night, it was him, my mum and me, and I think two of his friends. There could have been three. I was carrying my flip phone, which had no service, that I used as a clock, but its battery had drained earlier in the day, so it was off and useless. We were walking through an older area with upright gravestones, and I walked over to a grave when my phone rang, and it lit up as though someone was calling. I stopped and pulled it out of my pocket and looked, but there was no caller ID. I walked forward and showed my mum and it stopped, went black again, and the call died. Okay, that was weird, but whatever. We tried to move a headstone that had been knocked over, but it was far too heavy for the five or six of us to move. When we started walking back the way we came, at what I think was the same area, it happened a second time. The second time everyone was together and saw it wing twice, light up and then turn off suddenly. That same night when we were heading to the car, I had an urge to go to the newer side of the cemetery, so I did, as I felt oddly drawn to a specific stone. This area had only flat stones, all neatly lined in rows, and when I got there I realized it was a little boy's grave, maybe five years old. There were one of those small oval photos on the stone so that you could see him, and it was odd, because I had bought a beanie baby earlier that day and had it in my shirt. I felt drawn to leave it for him, so I did. From then on, occasionally I'd be out at the thrift store or whatever, and I'd occasionally see a toy or trinket and think, I should bring that to him. So I did for years, until I moved in 2009. I would visit the grave of a child I never knew, because I saw a toy he might like. Not sure why, but to me that seemed perfectly normal at the time. As an adult, I haven't been the type to hype into all the woo spooky ghost stuff. That being said, my friend's mother passed away, and we were at his family's place, doing what we could, being there however we could, you know, friend stuff. He goes on talking about how he can feel her in the house. Sometimes he can hear or smell her. We just took it as intense grieving and denial, and decided to go along with it to help him cope. During the trip down a hallway, I caught the faintest whiff of a scent. It smelled familiar to what he described his mother wearing, but we brush it off. Hours later, after some drinking, I decide to tell him, since he was getting the feeling none of us were taking what he said seriously. He pulls me aside into a hallway and says, she only shows up for family, blah, 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 and she trusts you. I trust you. We hug it out, he gets out some more crying and starts saying to her to leave a sign and to let me know he's serious. If the rest of the group can't take him seriously, at least I'm willing to. So give a sign, and nothing happens. Well, everyone did drink a lot, which meant, eventually, a lot of peeing. I go through the same hallway, and I feel and smell the same scent again, with a slight chill. The usual paranormal activity trope. In the restroom, I begin to take the world's best piss, Decorations you'd expect to find in the bathroom of family homes, towels, tiny soaps, a mirror, and a picture frame here and there. There's one of these oversized candles in front of me on top of the toilet tray thing. Well, that big fat candle decided to slide all the way from the center part of the toilet, all the way off and land perfectly upright in the mini waste basket next to the toilet. I did not finish my piss. Later, my friend told me, as he just had a knowing look. Not even an, I told you so look, but just like, yep, that's right, it was her. My friends and I went out to a cemetery that was quite popular in our college town, and I met one ghost called Lizzie that they had already met. She could sort of share her feelings with us, if that makes sense. When she was introducing herself to me, I started crying out of nowhere. That same night I was hugged by a five to six year old boy named James. He was shy but just sitting on my knees in the field next to the cemetery, where he was playing, telling me about myself and how I wanted to be a teacher. I also told him if I could give him a hug, and as I stood up to leave, I felt what could have been two small arms wrapping around my legs. When we left, my friend blasted the train horn he had on his truck, 
I just got the feeling that James was following us a little ways away and was laughing happily because he liked the horn on the truck. Happy Halloween! Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I do hope you had fun with me tonight. 100 ghost stories. I really like doing these videos. I hope you enjoyed listening to them too. Sorry I didn't post yesterday. It took a lot longer to record these than you would expect. But, you know, it's worth it if you guys like it. Um, if you made it to the end, wow, well done. And if you're not subscribed, well, you should probably do that, especially if you can sit through my voice for like two and a bit hours. Uh, yes, as I was saying at the start, you can consider checking out my app. Link in the description. We are trying to raise funds for server space and a few cool updates. And uh, if that does interest you uh, to become an early backer and receive some cool perks for doing so, you can find that info out there. I'd like to thank, as always, my members, my patrons, my coffee supporters, all you guys who help make my dream of having a YouTube channel a reality by listening in. So thank you. Again, don't forget to subscribe and like and the usual good stuff. I think I'm going to leave it here for now. My voice is sort of dead. So stay awesome, happy Halloween, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>